Hi, my name is Danielle, Danny for short, and this is not exactly a good time. Smile, Danny. Don't make us feel bad. Yeah, I'm so happy to be sent away out of your sight. Don't get us wrong, darling. You're gonna love this school, right, honey? Yes, it's a prestigious school for children of affluent families. Your mother and I loved our time at Kingsbury as well. Because it was perfect for you. Trust me, I'm nothing like you. But one day you'll thank us for keeping you off the streets. It's always that condescending tone. As much as I hated being stuck at some age-old boarding school, I could use some time away from my parents. Before I go on, I should mention how this happened. Simple. I saw a big tough guy pushing around my friend, so I slashed his car tires in front of him to teach him a lesson. But to my parents, that was a rebellious act, so they're sending me to some boarding school as punishment. As we pulled up to Kingsbury's gates, I momentarily forgot how much I didn't want to be there. The medieval castle towers disappearing into the clouds could be mistaken for Hogwarts. I actually felt a string of hope for my future here. Unfortunately, those hopeful thoughts were short-lived. The principal, Mr. Hooper, had already read through my file and made up his mind about me. Rest assured, we have a reputation for our discipline for a reason, and students like Danielle here benefit the most from it. Clearly not the fresh start I had imagined. Mrs. Bell led me down the hall, then stopped at the door to room 237. A girl answered. Hi, Rumi. I'm Cassandra. You can call me Cass. Welcome to Kingsbury. Danny. You'll be under Cassandra's supervision outside school hours. She's a model student who has been here long enough to know that there is no way around our rules. Of course they'd make the teacher's pet babysit me. Awesome. Cass was worse than I thought. She constantly used looking for things as an excuse to touch my stuff. Surely she snooped around when I wasn't here too. So I figured I could have a little fun. I'd give this nosy roommate something to poke her nose into. This looks like an ordinary diary, but on the inside, I wrote about how I'd bring a vodka-filled water bottle to class, put bedbugs in Cass's bed, and sell cheat sheets to other students. You know, fun stuff. I definitely wouldn't do any of that, but gotta give our audience some drama, right? <laughs> and the next day, Cass's behavior confirmed she had really read it. Is everything okay, Cass? What? Everything's fine. Just thought it was time to wash the sheets. Don't mind me. Sure, girl. I believe you. At Kingsbury, there were rules for just about everything. I managed to break half of them within my first two weeks just by existing, it seemed. Worse still, the punishments hardly ever matched the crimes. I once had to reshelve hundreds of books for missing the 8pm curfew just because I was studying in the library. Another time, I had to clean the dining hall for an entire week because my shirt was untucked for a second. Not to mention, Mrs. Bell seemed to have eyes out for everything, everywhere, all at once. What in the world? How was I supposed to know Teen Vogue was considered contraband here? And that was punishable by cleaning every single candle holder in the school church. Could this school be any more constricting? Do they really expect us to entertain ourselves by laughing at the clouds like we're patients in an asylum? Or what? With literally zero fun, no wonder why everyone here always looks like zombies. I hear you're the new school rebel. Danielle, right? I'm Caroline. What do you say we blow this pop school stand and go have some real fun? No thanks, I've had enough trouble already. It's fine, come on. Hey, you, finish this up, won't you? The audacity of this chick, though. Um, how about no? You can't boss people around like that. Drop that self-righteous act already. No need to pretend you care about dorks. I'm good, and he's not the dork here. Ugh, I thought you were cool. What was that about? That boy thanked me, introduced himself as Ian, and asked what trivial fault I must have made to be stuck with this boring chore. So we chatted and made fun of Kingsbury's rules while I finished up. I felt like I was finally seen after those awful first weeks. Suddenly, things didn't feel so bad anymore. However, Caroline already set out to make my life miserable. This morning, she blocked me in the hallway right before the bell rang, which got me in trouble for being late and running. If she wasn't getting me in trouble, she was trying to humiliate me. And annoyingly, it worked. As much as I wanted to do something about it, I knew that any sort of retaliation would get me in more trouble. The only peaceful moments I had were with Ian. How come I never knew about these cool areas before? This is the entertainment room in the home theater system. And out there is our Olympic-sized swimming pool and the croquet field. Pretty cool, right? But we're almost never allowed to use them. Sometimes I think these are here just to impress parents. This place is unbelievable. All work and no play? Is this a prison? And still, I had a nosy roommate to deal with. To keep up the ruse, I wrote some more made-up shenanigans in my dummy diary. 
Ridiculous rules, Caroline's antics, and how passionately I hated Kingsbury made their way into the diary as well. We we're trapped on campus and anything fun was against the rules. It felt like we we're here to be reprogrammed into obedient robots our parents wish we were. But at least Ian's cool. The next day, Cass kept trying to strike up a conversation with me. Hey, Rumi. Everything good with you? Define everything. Like, how are you liking Kingsbury? Is anyone giving you trouble or anything? Should I be having problems? No, no, I hope not. I just thought you seemed a little down. As your roomie, I wanted you to know that I'm here for you, if you need a friend. Oh, she must have read my diary again. But honestly, I found her clumsy cover-up quite endearing. Then she tried to change the subject to Caroline, who turned out to be her ex Rumi. I know she's mean, but she wasn't always that way. She only changed after a big trouble that almost got her kicked out. Wow, what could she have possibly done? Cass said Caroline then soon moved to another room also. I can't help but feel bad for her, though. She was actually kind to me. Cass seemed genuinely nice, but I wanted to see if she could be honest. If you're really my friend, then tell me, did you read my diary? You know? But hear me out. Your parents paid me to keep an eye on you and report everything to them. I agreed because I thought I was helping you stay on track. But Cass said she soon realized I wasn't really doing those bad deeds, so she actually told my parents good things only. I promise I've stopped working for them. It was wrong of them to spy on you, but I was in the wrong too. I'm sorry, can you forgive me? I believed her, but it wouldn't hurt to use this newfound friendship for some good. So I asked Cass to propose a fun activity for the upcoming holiday season to lighten up this lifeless place. Teachers listen to you, and we'll donate the money to a good cause. You love this place, don't you? Help make everyone else love it too. Sounds great. Let's do it. Thanks to Cass, our Christmas market came to life. I'd never seen so many smiling faces at Kingsbury. I even managed to secure some last-minute entertainment. Surprisingly, Ian volunteered to perform, and he's really good. He usually wasn't one to stand out, but that night, things changed. Maybe it was the Christmas lights or the Ed Sheeran effect was making Ian everyone's crush, including mine. Not only did we have a blast, but also raised thousands of dollars to donate to a local hospital. A few days after that, we saw Caroline being flirty towards Ian. Of course Caroline would try to sink her teeth into Ian now that she knew he's hot. Luckily, Ian didn't seem interested. What you looking at? Just you, making an absolute fool of yourself. How dare you? Thanks, Cass. She really wasn't taking the hint. That moment, I knew I'd found my people. The next day, while I was concentrating on my math exam, Caroline suddenly showed me something. I'm so sorry. Let's be friends. She wants to make up? Now? Mrs. Harris, she's copying me. What in the world? This shameless liar! I was preparing for the worst when Mrs. Harris said, What's this, Caroline? Her answers are nothing like yours. Not like Danielle needs to cheat off of you. She then gave me back my sheet and dismissed Caroline's. I could see she was still in shock when she walked out. Incredible! Mrs. Harris totally saw through her act. Mrs. Harris was unlike any other teacher at Kingsbury. She was firm, but kind. With her on my side, Caroline didn't bother me anymore. I felt safe confiding in an adult like her. We eventually became more like friends. You like Ian, don't you? I can tell just by looking. There's a carnival in town tomorrow night. That's your chance to make a move. But, Mrs. Harris, curfew... Okay, it didn't sound like a good idea, but I did want to go on a date with Ian, so I texted him and he immediately said yes. Mrs. Harris basically told me to go for it. What could go wrong? I tried to quietly leave, but as I stepped into the hallway, Mrs. Bell's flashlight blinded me and boy was she mad. So mad that she dragged me straight to Mr. Hooper's office. This was the second time I came here, which was a lot sooner than I expected. I knew from the start that you would be a problem, Miss Osborne. You have violated the rules time and time again and display a blatant disregard for authority. Sir, aside from tonight, I never intended to break any rule. I promise I've learned from those mistakes and won't be repeating them. They weren't minor offenses, Miss Osborne. Drinking, distributing cheat sheets, infesting your roommate's bed with bugs. Those were what I wrote in the dummy diary. How? We do not allow such delinquency here. In fact, you should be expelled at this very moment. However, out of respect for your parents, you may leave quietly by your own volition. I tried to explain myself, so he gave me three days to come up with evidence in the end. When I got back, I saw my desk drawer ajar, and Cass was asleep. She wouldn't do this. We're friends. But who else? My phone suddenly rang. It's Ian. 
I didn't want to talk about this over the phone, so I simply explained that someone didn't want me here and promised we'd talk later. I don't want you out either, bestie. Neither do I, Cassie. Not to waste any time, I came up with a plan to sniff out the culprit. This time, I wrote that I was playing a prank on Mrs. Bell. I even set up a silent alarm system with this piece of paper to see if anyone had opened my drawer. The next day, lo and behold, the alarm worked like a charm. They must have taken the bait. Now all there's left to do was... I opened the door to see someone totally unexpected. Now that my plan set in motion, Ian and I hid behind a wall near Mrs. Bell's office. This is an interesting first date. Romantic, isn't it? We suddenly heard footsteps approaching. I peeked around the corner to see... Mrs. Harris? I instantly felt my blood boiling. The one person who I trusted betrayed me. I was about to confront her when Ian pulled me back and put one hand over my mouth. Mrs. Harris looked around impatiently, then tried to open the door. As the hinges creaked open, Ian played a loud alarm. Startled, Mrs. Harris tripped and fell. Then Mrs. Bell sprinted towards us. <sighs> What's going on? I arrived just in time to catch these two sneaking around your office. They're playing a prank on you. Are you sure? Because that's not what the camera saw. She's lying. She wrote all about it in her diary. I'm here to catch her in the act. Mrs. Harris, how do you know what I write in my personal diary? I was just messing with my roommate. Are you trying to use them against me? Don't believe a word, she says. She's delinquent. Why would she write about sneaking in alcohol if she wasn't thinking of doing it? It's only a matter of time. So you just make up something if nothing happens, Mrs. Harris? Caroline appeared alongside Mr. Hooper. Mrs. Harris's face turned white at their sight. Caroline then said she accidentally overheard Mrs. Harris tell me to go out after curfew, which was shocking because she'd heard the same before. That's how Caroline was disciplined while her boyfriend was expelled. Recognizing the pattern in Mrs. Harris's behavior, she came to me. We decided to work together to stop this once and for all. Do you care to explain yourself? You really believe these rascals? They just want to make me look bad. That's not me in that video. It's deep fake. By that point, many students had gathered around us. They all came forward to share similar stories about Mrs. Harris. She gained their trust and persuaded them to break school rules. When they're on the verge of expulsion, she blackmailed their parents into paying her lots of money to keep them here. At this point, Mrs. Harris had to relent and admitted her wrongdoings. Mr. Hooper summoned me to his office the following day. Miss Osborne, I apologize for misjudging you. I am aghast to learn what Mrs. Harris was doing right under my nose. I may have never known it if it wasn't for yesterday's incident, so thank you. I assure you I'll do whatever it takes to fix the damages she caused. Sir, I don't think Mrs. Harris was the root of the problem. It's Kingsbury's harsh rules. I know you take great pride in them, but rigidity isn't helping. Obedient kids become soft and submissive, while strong-willed ones end up challenging authority. Mrs. Harris took advantage of that. Most students here are exceptional, but their creativity is getting crushed under iron discipline. Mr. Hooper patiently listened to me. In the end, he shook my hand and bid me farewell. A week later, we received an email titled, A Message from the Principal. It contained a video of Mr. Hooper giving a formal apology to the students and families who were victimized by Mrs. Harris, who won't be teaching at any school again. He also acknowledged the problems plaguing our school. Going forward, we will be installing council-based solutions to handle students' problems. Several harsh punishments will be abolished, and mental health services will be available to all. In addition, extracurricular activities will be encouraged. Things really changed for the better. Liveliness had returned to these beautiful hallways. Caroline stopped acting out and started patching things up with her old friend Cass. Now that the dust has settled, I think I'm in love with Kingsbury. And someone too. We're finally going on our long-awaited date. I was at a bustling party, waiting for the one who would decide whether I'd won my cousin's bet or not. Forget your dumb ex. Fifty bucks if you get the number of the next guy walking through that door. Oh, here comes my target. I hurriedly approached him, but stumbled and we're kissing. I could feel the taste of grapes on his lips. I immediately pushed him away and stood up. Uh, f phone number, please. The guy looked confused, but still handed me a note. All done. Time to flee the scene. Hi, I'm Agatha, a super introvert who hiccups when nervous. And lucky enough, my kooky cousin dragged me to this crazy party. I ran home to see Mum looking all excited. Oh, my sweet child, you're back already. It's just not my thing, Mom. But cooking is. I have some amazing news. The local soccer club is looking for a chef, so I recommended you. And guess what? They said you can start ASAP. Yes, 
I've dreamt of becoming a chef since I was little, and now that dream will soon come true. Yahoo! Today's the day. I eagerly arrived at the soccer club, but my jaw almost hit the floor when I saw Mateo, my ex. What was he doing here? Flustered, I looked away and saw that guy from the party. What on earth? My life's officially over. After the introduction, I immediately ran to the pitch for some fresh air, but then a hand patted my shoulder. It's him again. No calls or texts? You asked for my number. Are you that shy? <laughs> I'm Killian, by the way. Uh, it, it was just a joke. I... Please leave. But then he stepped even closer. Panicked, I pushed him away. Almost made him fall backward. I tried to catch him, but... Not again. This time he smells like chocolate. Oh, you like my lips this much? Why not just say so? <gasps> Holy moly! I ran straight away without looking back. I better stay ten miles away from him. Suddenly I saw Mateo passing by. Has he seen anything? But why bother? As if he cared. He dumped me. Okay, Agatha, you're here to work, so focus. But with these jocks around, it's not that easy. They always jump scared me when I was doing my job and made fun of me when I got lost in the changing room. And Killian was always there in time to save me. Everyone, stop. Close your eyes. Then he threw a super stinky, sweaty towel at my face. Ew. Plus, that jerk is the pickiest eater on this planet. He's constantly complaining about my food and demanded I cook him something else. There you go. I'm cutting on starch to build muscles. I'll get rid of the pasta. Oops, I forgot. I'm lactose intolerant. Okay, no cheese. Poor little chicken. I can't eat that. So, are you allergic to the plate too? Meanwhile, other team members were way easier, especially Mateo. We used to date, so I knew his taste pretty well. I gave you some extra pork, your favorite. I don't like pork. I hate pigs. Just then, Killian jumped in. You should focus on me instead. We can discuss my meals privately. Before I could say anything, he already handed me a note. Me and him alone? That's weird. But learning his eating habit would help my job, right? Nope. Big mistake. Killian had an endlessly absurd list of diet restrictions. No more than 2.5 grams of salt a day, mayonnaise on everything, no mushrooms, and spaghetti without tomato sauce? Did he just descend onto Earth? And during the meal, this dude kept smiling and staring at me. You like me or something? You have a veggie on your teeth! Dude! Oh gosh! I immediately ran to the restroom, but Killian caught up with me, holding a ball of wool. Is this yours? I looked down to see a wool thread coming out of my dress's hemline. <gasps> oh gosh, I wish the ground just swallowed me whole right now. Surprisingly, Killian put his jacket on me. That was cool. Just then he caught me drooling over him, so I immediately pretended to play with my phone. <laughs> I just want to beat level 9674 in Candy Crush. Strangely, over the next few days, Mateo started being nice to me. Too nice. Your cooking is top-notch as always. Tomorrow, can you make me those delicious vegetable fritters we used to have together? He still remembered that? Boy, he made my heart race. I sprinted to the kitchen and put on music to calm down. Soon, I found myself singing and dancing to my jam. I promise that you'll never find another like me. He he! Ooh, 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 ooh! Mamma mia! How long had he been there? Flustered, I burnt myself. Killian rushed over and held my hand. You okay? You can't even handle yourself? Then he insisted on finishing my work and even prepared us a dish. Wah, his broad back. Isn't he quite a charmer when he cooks? We talked a lot, and turns out, we share a ton of things in common. Beneath his teasing, he's actually gentle, caring, and a good listener. I suddenly realized that I had stopped hiccuping since ages. One afternoon, while giving out water, I saw Killian. Oh wow, it's like the sunshine drew a halo around him in his exquisite face. Wait a minute, why was I smiling? Suddenly, a fancy-looking girl came over. Killian, why didn't you reply to my messages? You left me hanging all night. Look, I have dark circles now. That's on you. I went to leave, but out of nowhere, Mateo pulled me into a corner. Why were you so close to him? He's only messing with me. Huh? What do you mean? He competes with me in everything. I was called to you to protect you. Now that he knows you're important to me, he'll harm you to hurt me. I think he's just trying to be nice? His dad is our club's biggest sponsor. 
You really think he wants to hang out with people like us while Sloan, whose family owns the largest hospital in the state, is here? I don't know what to believe anymore. However, I had to admit they looked like a perfect couple. While holding a coffee tray one time, I clumsily bumped into Sloan. Are you blind? Why do they let a doofus work here? Come on, Sloan, you bumped into her. He sure seemed sweet to me. Maybe Mateo had misunderstood him. Then once, I spotted the two of them in a quarrel where Killian even pushed Mateo. I tried to intervene, but they brushed me off. What was going on between them? A few days later, I returned from the grocery store to see the head coach in a fit of rage. Explain to me how Mateo is hospitalized for eating your food. What? Why? Stop it! You're fired! My head spun in a million circles. I hadn't done anything wrong! I was packing my things when Sloane appeared. Well, well, well. Looks like little Miss Muffet met her match. Only need some simple tricks to get rid of you and your phony, needy act. Stop dreaming about Killian. You're not at our level. Wait, our? Who's with you? But Sloane just smirked and strutted away. That's when the memory of Killian and Mateo fighting struck my mind. So, Killian must have conspired with Sloane to harm Mateo and ruin my career in the process? How could he? Still, he had the cheek to text me as if nothing had happened. Dummy, Agatha. You should have listened to Mateo from the start and stayed away from Killian. I visited Mateo in the hospital, but he coldly shooed me away. It was exactly like the day he dumped me. Today is the city's championship final, and to be honest, I didn't really know why I was here. I looked around for Mateo, but couldn't find him. He might still be sick, so we had to skip this match. On the field, Killian seemed distracted and off his game. What's wrong with him today? Killian, my dear. The lady sitting next to me looked nervous and kept fidgeting. I spoke to her and figured out she was Killian's mom. She told me the shocking news. His little sister was missing. He was blackmailed into making their team lose or he'd never see his sister again. Killian faced the goal, but he didn't kick. Instead, he passed to another player who then scored the goal. The spectators cheered in triumph, while other players celebrated the goal with Killian. Blood seemed to have drained from his face. As predicted, the threats kept coming. I couldn't just sit and pray, so I asked Killian's mom for more clues. She played me the recording of her daughter. I strained my ears to listen and heard a noise. Peekaboo! Peekaboo! I know that sound. It's Mateo's parrot! Ma'am, I know who's behind this. It's Mateo! What? I can excuse fake food poisoning, but how dare he harm my Killian? Ugh, say it again, Sloane. He asked me to fake the medical paper, and I figured it would also kick you out, so I agreed. But what about Killian's sister? That was nothing to do with me, I swear. We rushed to Mateo's house. It took him forever to open the door. Mateo, are you okay now? I... I have thought a lot... about us, and realized how important you are to me. And I don't want to... Lose you again. Mateo, could you? Oh, please. Look at yourself. I just dated you for fun. You truly think I like you? <laughs> and no more pork for me. Please. Do you seriously think I'd want you back after the despicable things you did to me and Killian? Killian? Props to that freak for coming at me for telling the truth. So pathetic of him to go for my leftovers. It's you, dummy. Then he blurted out how he cooked up this entire scheme to ruin Killian's career out of the jealousy which was triggered when he visited him in the hospital and told him not to worry about missing the match as they've had a new strategy to cover his absence and the team would perform well anyway. I'm not a pawn that can easily be kicked out. You wish. You are pathetic. Right then, Sloane appeared with the little girl. Let's go. There's no time. Where are you going, Agatha? Admit it. You're still smitten with me. Sorry, the old Agatha can't come to the phone right now. Why? Oh, cause she's dead. After that, we rushed to the stadium. There, I shouted out Killian's name and raised his sister's hands. He seemed surprised to see us, then nodded and smiled. Afterwards, he played like a pro and led his team to victory. He was even awarded player of the match. It's an honor to receive this title, and I want to shout out to someone important. Without her, this wouldn't have happened. Agatha, thank you so much. Countless cameras turned to me. Then he rushed over to drag me to a corner where I told him everything. I know Mateo's a jerk, but I didn't expect him to be that bad. But no worries. Let's see how he likes being permanently banned from the soccer club. Agatha, 
I, um, want to tell you that I found something just as important as soccer. You! He then grabbed my face and pressed his lips against mine. Finally, we had a legit kiss, and it was magical. It's the country's fair day today, or as I like to call it, my winning day. See that huge plushie over there? It's about to become mine. Ready, set, and yes, bullseye! I excitedly took the bear when it suddenly got yanked away by this crazy bull. Hey, I won that bear fair and square, but I saw it first. Now hand it over, hobbit. Hobbit? I yanked the bear from him, but it ended up ripping in half. His girlfriend burst into tears, and now I'm like a red rag to him. He rushed towards me, and before I could even think straight, my fist took over. How many times have I told you, Angie? A girl doesn't just raise her fist and cause trouble like that. It was self-defense. He was gonna hit me, Mom. I'm done with this. Like father, like daughter. Why are you even bringing him up? He left us years ago, so let him stay out of our lives. Even thinking about him made my blood boil. I turned to the window, avoiding the look I knew my mom was giving me. When we got home, we found the door open. Something wasn't right. I quickly ran into the house and saw black shadows standing in our living room. Who are you people? What are you doing in my house? All hail our new leader! The lights suddenly came back on, and I saw them all bow to... Me? Angelina, I've been looking forward to meeting you. I'm Nick Mason, Mr. Bruno's right-hand man. My dad sent you here? From this day on, you will become our new leader of the ex-organization, on his behalf. You gotta be kidding me! For so many years, he hasn't cared about whether we live or die, and now he suddenly wants me to take over? And look at you all. This organization seems no good. Please don't misunderstand us. Ex-organization was founded by your father to help the local people and fight for justice. But things took a horrible turn, so I'm afraid he's gone to jail for a little while. He's in jail? Oh, my head! Fighting for justice? That's why he's in jail now? Your father put the safety of the seaport local first. In doing so, he fell into the enemy's trap. You will understand him better if you accept his wish and become our leader. As much as I hate to admit it, I missed my dad. He once promised that he would skip his work and hang out with me on my birthday, but then he just disappeared without a word and has been quiet for the past six years. Until now. Darling, I have something for you. She gave me some old letters and a plushie bear, which I'd begged my dad to buy for me. She'd hid it from me the whole time, as she was mad at my dad for always risking his life for things that weren't any of his business. It turned out that my dad had still cared about me, even without me knowing. Mom, I've made up my mind. I hope you'll support me. So, my mom and I had a long journey to the seaport of the city where my dad's ex-organization was secretly operating. We walked into the market, then stopped at a large fish shop. How on earth does an organization have their secret base in such a crowded place? The most dangerous place is the safest one. Remember that. I remembered my dad used to say this to me when I was a kid too. This must be his crazy idea. Nick led me into a room at the back of the store and introduced this as the organization's base. So, this is where my dad used to work, and he'd still kept the same old hat all these years? Let's get to work. There's been a lot of theft going on in town lately. Every night, the thieves break into stores and steal everything they can. People are panicking right now, so we need to solve this as soon as possible. Isn't this the police's responsibility? If they were capable, we wouldn't have to get involved. That's why your father maintains this organization. Now you need to settle in a bit. I've arranged your accommodation and enrolled you in a local school. Remember, your identity is top secret. For the next few days, at 5 a.m. every morning, Uncle Nick got me up and took me to the port to tell me more about the thieves. However, he just joined the fish auction the whole morning instead of actually doing anything serious. So, I went somewhere else and pretended to talk to the fishmongers about the burglaries in town. At that moment, a guy in a cap that covered his face bumped into me. Hey, dude, nice bracelet, but ever taught to apologize? Hey, hey, take it easy. You're making a scene. Okay, maybe I should just behave like a normal schoolgirl here. Having to get up so early in the morning to go to the port also made me too exhausted to study anything. One morning I was falling asleep at my usual place when some noise woke me up. A group of gangsters was teasing a boy? Dude, I'm trying to catch some shut-eye over here. Shut up, loser. Uh-oh, they were messing with the wrong person. 
I grabbed a nearby mop and made some fancy moves that took them all down, then dragged the flabbergasted nerd out of there. He wasn't calm enough to run for his life. This little guy is Killian. Ever since that day, he kept following me and wouldn't shut up about how strong I was, saying things like, I could never imagine a small person like you having such crazy strength. Or, they all pick on me, but you, Angel, don't. Then, let's be friends. I have no peace when he's around. While I was trying to make some space for myself, a call suddenly came from Uncle Nick. One of the jewelry shops in the city just got burglarized. Can you help? What? Yeah, I'll head back to headquarters and set up a plan. You can count on me. I then hung up, and that's when I heard a ball hitting the floor. I turned around, and there was Killian, standing behind me, shocked to the core. He'd obviously heard the whole conversation. If you utter a word of this to anyone, you'll not wake to see another day. Do you hear me? I... I can help you. I know this town like the back of my hand. Okay, we can be friends. Or associates. As long as you keep quiet. After school, Killian and I rushed to the crime scene. While wandering around, I spotted a shiny thing among the broken glass. It must have been from those thieves. But wait, I've seen this D symbol somewhere. I was about to pick it up when Killian grabbed my hand, shivering. Bro, it's her who attacked us back then. That gangster suddenly came at me. I tried to dodge him, but ended up toppling over backwards. Suddenly, a strong arm held me back and shielded me from the punch. Mamma mia! Who's this handsome hunk? I wrapped my arms around him and pulled out my inner damsel in distress. Oh, my hero. These jerks won't leave me alone. Please save me. I'm scared. Mess with my friend one more time and you're dead meat. Get lost. He turned to me, making sure I was okay, then parted way. Through Killian, I found out his name is Frank, a senior at our school, and he's known for his cold and reserved demeanor. Definitely my type of guy. But wait, what about the bracelet? I returned to the broken glass window. The bracelet was nowhere to be found. At school, all students were constantly talking about these recent burglaries. Everyone was worried about who would be the next victim. When will all this nonsense stop? I wonder who their next target will be. Don't you see? The recent victims were all the big shots in town, and the crimes were all on the days the police weren't out patrolling. So then, Graham's jewelry shop and Holden's boutique store could potentially be their next target? That makes sense! Uh, wait, Frank? Now that you're here, I feel so much safer. It'll probably be Holden's because Graham already added a new security system to his shop. Please stop fiddling with your hair like that. Good observation. The police don't patrol the port tonight, so they might make a move. So stay still inside, will you, sweetie? Aww. But his sweetie still got to watch hold and shop and catch the thieves red-handed tonight. An hour had already passed, but nothing had happened. Right at that moment, Nick received a phone call that Graham's shop had just been robbed. The thieves broke the security system and everything had been taken. Nick snapped at me for acting impulsively without having any clear evidence. But this felt so sketchy, though. Holden's store was way more vulnerable. It's like they knew we were waiting to ambush them here. A few days later, while I was patrolling around the shopping street, Killian informed me that there was a suspicious masked man sneaking around the pearl shop. I immediately dashed there, right at the moment he was breaking the lock. In the blink of an eye, I kicked him, knocking him to the ground. Angelina! Holy crickets, are you okay? I looked up to see Frank running towards me. The thief immediately rose up, causing me to fall back, then fled the scene right away. Catch the thief, quick! Frank and Killian darted past me and followed the guy. I waited for them at the harbor, but only Killian came back. Oh, sorry, Angelina, but I have to say this. There's something fishy about Frank. I think he's on the thief's side. Oh, come on. Are you jealous of him? How do I know you're not their spy? What do you mean? You've been acting suspicious from the get-go. You wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. And remember how you listened in on my conversation with Nick? And what about when you made me so sure it was Holden Shop that would be the next target, hmm? And now you're blaming Frank? You're so wrapped up in that jerk. I saw him purposefully let that thief go. When I was about to catch up to him, Frank suddenly stopped, making me crash into him. Then the thief got away. That, that can't be. He's always there to help me. I'm the one who's always backing you up, but you only see that fraud as your hero. Ugh, just forget it. Wait, I... I had no idea who to trust. It was all so confusing. 
Right at that moment, I got a message from Frank asking me to go to this meteor camping place as he had something important to say to me. Okay, it was time to confront him and get the truth. I rushed there as fast as I could, only to find... nobody? I looked around and noticed this suspiciously lit up tent. The tent flap suddenly opened and a shadow bolted towards me. Hey, hey, calm down, it's me. I opened my eyes to see Frank in front of me. He'd set up this whole place for me? Frank suddenly took my hand and confessed. Angelina, I've fallen head over heels for you. I was wondering, will you be my girlfriend? Together, we could be a power couple. With your ex-organization and my Darkwalkers clan backing us, how do you know I'm related to ex-organization? Ha, <laughs> I've been watching you since that first day you wandered around the fish market with that old Nick. <laughs> Remember this bracelet? You almost got me that time. You, you shameless, rotten, stinking skunk! I even trusted you over Killian! Oh, come on. It's not my fault you fell for me and betrayed your best friend. You and I are more alike than you think. It's only fitting that we become a team. Enough! Listen carefully. I'm never going to team up with a dirtbag like you. H how did you- Guys, take her! From the tents, Frank's minions came out one by one and surrounded me, then gradually tightened the siege. Let's see who's the boss now. Oh, no, 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 I fell into his trap. Those punks held a rope, ready to tie me up. But right at that moment, I heard a car engine approaching. Is that Killian leading Nick and the X organization? He jumped out of the car, ran past the minions and Frank to get to me. Angelina, are you all right? You're not hurt anywhere, are you? I shook my head and felt so touched. He'd come to save me. I thought you were mad at me. I was, a little bit. But I couldn't let you do all this alone, so I went to Uncle Nick. Behind Killian, Uncle Nick and the team had seized all the thieves and their ringleader, Frank. Now they'd spill all their dirty secrets in front of the law. It turns out, my dad was about to expose the Darkwalker clan for their evil antics when they framed him for intentionally causing injury and put him behind bars. Since I became the new leader of X, Frank had been trying to seduce me so he could manipulate the organization. Finally, though, my dad was found innocent and released. Mom and I welcomed him home with open arms. I'm so sorry for leaving you behind. I was afraid I would put you in danger. It's all right, Dad. You must have had a hard time, too. I'm sorry for taking so long to realize how proud I am of you. I missed you so much. Dad was super impressed with what we had accomplished for the organization. He even decided to let me continue to be the leader, all the while supporting me and teaching me his tricks. And I know for sure everything will turn out okay, especially with this guy by my side. So, did I do a good job proving myself, lady boss? The vice leader position seems to suit me well, don't you think? Hmm, you do deserve a promotion. How does vice leader and boyfriend sound? The bell had already rung, but here I was, still stuck in chemistry class. Mr. Evans won't stop droning on about the big test coming up. Abigail! Abigail! You do know what a bond is, right? That's easy. My dad goes on about them all the time. U.S. treasuries, Japan bonds... They are financial bonds. We're talking about chemical bonds, for Christ's sake. Close enough. Don't you think I deserve a grade increase? Enough! Go and meet your homeroom now. This is unacceptable. Jeez, his bad mood must have been contagious for adults, as Miss Garcia was also in a foul mood. So, Abigail, I will organize a meeting with your dad. M my dad? No, no, he'll go mad and take away my credit card. This seriously cannot go on anymore. Your grades are in a downward spiral. I promise, I'll actually study this time. Please, let me prove it by acing my next test. Your next test? Let's see. That appears to be your chemistry final in two weeks' time. That's perfect! I need time to process all the knowledge I've been learning anyway. And, phew, crisis averted. Now, where's Norma? I need some retail therapy with my bestie. Hmm, so I have two weeks to work this out. I mean, you can probably cram in quite a bit within that time. No, Norma! I have to figure out what I need to buy before my dad locks the card! Right then, a nearby waiter suddenly tripped and spilled orange juice onto... Norma and her newly brought Chanel bag! Oh no! But to my surprise, she just smiled and dismissed the waiter. What was that, Norma? What's got into you? Love, I guess? It's still early days, but I'm in love, Abby. <sighs> Isn't the world so dreamy and beautiful? Hmm, you are... kinda happy? 
Hold up. Mrs. Garcia is single. If I found someone special, then she'd be too distracted to call in my dad for the meeting. Yeah, I guess. Or, you know, you could actually study. Don't be ridiculous. <sighs> Mr. Evans is single, too. Two birds, one stone. <laughs> so the next morning, I joined Mr. Evans' chemistry club to spy on him. Wanna hear a joke? What do you think zero says to eight? Nice belt! <laughs> Hey girl, can I be the photon to your electron and take you to an excited state? Please, somebody save me already! Yo, Callum, you're late to the party. We're having a blast over here. Are you coming home with me or Mrs. Garcia today? Miss Garcia? Hi, Hank. My mom's staying late at school today, so... This Callum guy is Miss Garcia's son? I sure came to the right place. Mr. Evanson gave some boring lecture about states of matter. After drawing a whole maze of weird symbols and stuff on the board, he asked if anyone had any questions. Here comes my chance. Oh, good. Curiosity is the gateway to knowledge. Go ahead, Abigail. I was wondering if you like tea or coffee? Oh, and also, are you more of a dog or cat person? Can you please pay attention to the lesson? Callum, as a top student, I think you can help her. Of course you will, Mr. Evans. Poor guy, he's totally oblivious that he's been chosen for my master plan. Who made him Miss Garcia's son in the first place? So, Callum, right? You know, your mom's actually my homeroom teacher. Yeah, I got that figured out long ago. Wait, what? You already knew about me? How can I not? The lowest scoring student in every class? You're my mom's favorite dinner topic. That's why I'm here, studying to change your mom's dinner topic. Could you help me with that? Nope. I don't know what you're up to, but keep me out of it. No way I was letting this plan fail. So I decided to follow Callum to the library after school to learn more about Miss Garcia. Oops, what a coincidence. Didn't expect you to be here. Thought you'd be studying with your mom 24-7. We're just normal people who do other things apart from studying. You know, reading, watching movies, talking. I guess you and your mom only read specialized books. <laughs> Quite the opposite, actually. We both enjoy Victor Hugo. What about you? Since when were you suddenly interested in chemistry? M me Why, why not? I've always had the biggest passion for chemistry. The way all the substances interact with each other is mind-blowing. Chemical bonds, you know? If you're that interested, then yeah, I'll make you a master of chemistry. But first, you may want to try reading your book the correct way. Did he just say he'd help me with chemistry? Hmm, why does my gut instinct tell me trouble is on the way? I came home with Callan's precious piece of information about his mom and forged the cheesiest love letter, well, on behalf of Mr. Evans, of course, and made sure to hand deliver it. Who knew someone as strict as Miss Garcia had a soft spot for Victor Hugo romance novels? <laughs> From my hiding spot, I saw Callum open the door and get the letter. Okay, first bird down. The next morning, I was excited to peek into the teacher's room to check on Miss Garcia. But why is the principal here? And in his hand is the love letter. Ye who suffer because ye love, love yet more. To die of love is to live in it. From David. David Evans? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Bryce. That's actually my, uh, literature assignment. Wrong address. <laughs> How in the caramel fudge did this letter end up here? Callum obviously got the letter. I decided to sneak the letter directly into Miss Garcia's bag afterward. Better safe than sorry. In the following days, I needed to send Mr. Evans the other love letter, too. Only, Callum was a little too determined to turn me into a chemistry master. He made sure I got the notes imprinted in my brain, questioned me on the topics like an FBI agent interrogating a hard case, and even had his eyes fixed on me every time I carried out the experiments. I got no time left for my plan. You know what I've come to find out? You're actually not that bad at studying. Just need some more attention. As if I care. When will he leave me alone so I can take the other bird down? Right then, Mr. Evans suddenly called Callum to the discussion room next door. Gotta go. You can finish the oxidation. Remember to measure carefully and not take your eyes off of it for a second. Don't sweat it. I've got this. As soon as he left, I sneaked into Mr. Evans' room and put the letter in his bag. But when I was about to leave, something caught my eye. A picture of young Mr. Evans. Yikes! Did too much studying and no loving make his hair leave him for good? Hmm, he has a lot of books in here. Some of them are by... Victor Hugo! Ha! Huh. Seems Mr. Evan and Miss Garcia are made for each other. Oh, sugar! The experiment! I ran back to the lab and poured all the substances in... But it was... weird. What did I tell you? All the time spent on this experiment, just to see it burn! Oh, wait. What is this purplish substance? 
Mauve! We've accidentally created Mauve instead! You're so brilliant, Abby! Didn't really know what was going on, but are those my cheeks I can feel blushing? What's gotten into me? Didn't know you two are progressing that fast. Maybe keep it down a notch in public. Seeing Hank made us both turn cherry red and jolt apart. It was just a joke, but somehow my heart was flipping. After the incident, Callum didn't seem so annoyed with me anymore. Instead, he was kind of caring. He would patiently explain things I didn't understand and clean up after our experiments. Talk about having great chemistry together. Literally. The two-week mark soon arrived, but strangely, all the questions were not hard at all. I know all of the answers. They're all on topics I covered with Callum. Later that day, I was walking when Callum zoomed over to me. Mr. Evans said you passed the test. I knew you could do it. Abby, if you'd like, do you want to go out for a movie? Abby, Abby, shocking news. I just saw Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia holding hands in the school garden. Things are progressing. Norma and I both turned into excited dolphins when Callum's happy expression fell. What are you talking about? My mom with whom? Mr. Evans, you should thank Abby. It was her plan to get your mom a new boyfriend. The plan? Is that what you call it? Passion for chemistry? So what? It worked, didn't it? This isn't gonna happen. No way. What's your problem? Why don't you want your mom to be happy? Talk about selfish. Callum couldn't answer and huffed off. He's been ignoring me ever since. And me? I decided to find a new lab partner. Well, if Hank would quit getting in the way, why did he always poke his nose in? I gave Hank a dirty look, but he just pushed Callum toward me. You two are welcome. Ugh, what gives? Callum couldn't even meet my eye. I felt kind of bad for Callum. I guess no one wants to see their parent dating their chemistry teacher, right? Why bother anyway? I should be happy because the plan has worked out. What's up with Callum? Why is he acting as if someone burglarized his house or something? Actually, Callum's dad walked out on them a couple of years back. Since then, he swore to never let anyone hurt his mom again. That's why he's so against your matchmaking plan. That explains a lot, but wait, how did you know about the matchmaking plan? Hank started to sweat bullets while Norma constantly winked at him. Hey, are you guys hiding something from me? Don't tell me- No, no, we're not dating. We- we're- You said it yourself, idiot! Hmm, that makes sense. The next morning, Miss Garcia suddenly got sick, and this Miss Flowers came in to cover. Different from our strict homeroom, Miss Flowers didn't teach much and seems pretty chill with whatever we do in class. Great, huh? Yeah, it would be if she didn't keep on flirting with Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans didn't look comfortable with Miss Flowers at all. She was obviously trying so hard to win him over. Poor Miss Garcia. She looked so happy with Mr. Evans before. My master plan can't have been for nothing. I gotta do something. So I handcrafted a reminder love letter on behalf of Miss Garcia again. That was sure to make Mr. Evans' heart give off butterfly flutters. But I was sneaking it onto his desk when Miss Flowers appeared. Abigail, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Mr. Evans is my dream man, not hers. No, he's not. He and Miss Garcia are obviously made for each other. Duh. I demand that you take that back at once. He's my heart's desire. Mine. No, he's not. He goes all gooey-eyed at Miss Garcia, not you. This is unacceptable. Detention. That's not fair, Miss Flowers. You can't punish her over nothing. You. Garcia's son, right? Wanna play Hero Saves Beauty? Detention for both of you, now! Miss Flowers? More like Miss Tyrant? What kind of a teacher made students clean the windows for detention? Ugh, these stupid windows, breaking my back already. And Callum being all Frosty the Snowman with me is not helping. You've brought all of this on yourself. What? If you hadn't have given the love letter to the principal in the first place, Mr. Evans and your mom would be official already. My mom and I are fine by ourselves. Who's being stubborn now? Hank already told me everything. I understand you're upset, but have you ever thought about what your mom wants? She sure looked happy with Mr. Evans. Callum didn't say anything, but I could tell from his glazed eyes that he was thinking hard about this. When Callum and I finally got out of detention, Hank and Norma rushed in. We just heard that Miss Garcia has food poisoning. She's fine now, but Miss Flowers will probably cover for another week. Why do I feel like Miss Flowers has something to do with this? She visited my mom yesterday and gave her a casserole. That's it! Miss Flowers must have poisoned Miss Garcia so she could replace her! But this is getting crazy. Hmm, what can we do? How about we publicize all the love letters online so the whole school knows about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans? I mean, if that's okay with you? Callum didn't say anything and just nodded. We immediately rushed to the IT room, but the computer's locked. Let me handle it. I know the password. With Callum's help, we posted on the school forum. And guess what? 
everyone's smitten with Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans' love story. Cute, huh? We then left to visit Miss Garcia, but Miss Flowers appeared in front of us. What do you all think you're doing? Making a fuss on the school forum? I bravely stepped up to face her. You've seen it. Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia belong together. You should just give up on him already. Is that so? You know what? Mr. Evans actually wanted me to meet him for a private talk tonight. And as for your homeroom teacher, guess what? That position will be mine full time. <laughs> I'm afraid you've got it all mixed up, Miss Flowers. It's Mr. Evans, followed by Miss Garcia. We ask you to come to talk about Miss Garcia's food poisoning. That's right. Earlier today, you visited me, asking me if I was ready to come back to class tomorrow. You were very kind and even brought me homemade food. Little did I know that this was a deliberate attempt for you to make me sick. Luckily, Mr. Evans dropped by just in time to get me to the ER. And now you're talking about taking my place? No way! But, but the students clearly love me more anyway. They hate you because you always make them study. Just then, everyone started booing her. Miss Garcia is strict, but at least she's serious with teaching and always makes sure we study. You don't teach us anything. That's right! And we all know about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans already. You're just being a third wheel. No! No, no! This can't be true! David, tell these kids that our love is as bright as the sun and, and that we're soulmates! I know you love me! Tell them! David, tell them you love me! Tell them! Unfortunately, my heart has always belonged to Miss Garcia. I was nervous about sharing my feelings with her, but fate brought us together, and now I couldn't be happier. Miss Flower's whole expression wilted. Ha! She burst into hysterical tears and ran off. Mom, are you okay? I'm sorry I wasn't there. I'm fine, Callum. Please don't worry. Um, thanks for looking out for my mom. Please, can you take her home for me? Mr. Evans nodded, then took Miss Garcia away. When there were only four of us... Actually, two of us left. Callum turned to me. You were right. It was so silly of me trying to stop people from falling in love. Because when you fall for someone, you can't help it. What do you mean? I mean, I think I've fallen for you. Hey, I'm Esther of the rising TikTok channel at Aesthetic, where I share my passion for fashion. Look at my newest design. Cool, huh? Who would have thought newspaper was a great material for making dresses? I was trying one on and posing for photos when I heard a knock on my door. That's my mom and dad. Esther, we have some good news. We're moving. What? I'm being transferred to another branch in San Francisco. Can you believe we'll be living in that sunny city? No, no, we can't move. I'm, I'm a senior already. All my friends are here. Mom! Just get over it and start packing. This is our one chance at a better life. Why can't they understand that I'm not simply shy, but actually have major social anxiety? It's a real thing that I can't just get over. That's also why my 2 million TikTok followers still haven't seen my face yet. I could barely handle the stress from across the screen, never mind being alone in a brand new school full of strangers. Oh gosh, this place must be twice as big as my old school. It's gonna take forever to find the bathroom. Man, it feels like a thousand eyes are on me. Or maybe not, but I can't risk looking around. What if someone makes eye contact? My palms are sweaty, my heartbeat is so loud I can hardly hear anything else. But then, some hot couple walked in and literally ate up the entire hallway's attention. Good, surely no one would notice me now. It was so exhausting running from one class to the next. Now, where do I sit? I walked over to a table, but no one batted an eye. I wasn't sure if I should sit down or not, when suddenly, a pretty girl appeared. Sky blue. Sorry? Anyway, you're new, right? I'm Jojo, class president. Come sit with us. I followed her to another table. Hi guys, got space for two more? Yeah, sure, the more the merrier. Oh no, that girl doesn't sound too happy about having me here. But it would be too awkward to just get up and leave. Uh, hi, I'm Esther. Hey, didn't know they serve fresh tomatoes here. Finish your lunch, Amanda. We have homework to do. Phew, yeah, think about your homework, guys. Don't mind me. I got to know the school layout a bit better, so the next day wasn't as hard. Until I saw some girl waving at me. She looked like Jojo, but her eyes weren't blue. Must be her twin sister or a doppelganger waving at someone behind me. You really just got ghosted in real life? And you call yourself class president? I flinched. So that actually was the class president from yesterday? How strange. 
Then, my absolute worst nightmare came true in biology class. We had to work in pairs. Okay, which group would like a new member? Anyone? Please, help a girl out. I see you're in a desperate need of a partner, Zeke. Why don't you raise your hand so Esther can see where you are? I saw an arm at the back of the class, so I walked towards it. Hi, newbie. Esther, right? My name is... Baby Blue Emerald Green? Hey, do my eyes look funny to you, new girl? Jeez, I didn't mean to upset him. So I ended up explaining that I'd had issues with eye contact since I was little. So my mom made me pay attention to strangers' eye colors to make it seem like I looked them in the eye. She even asked me what color their eyes were afterwards to make sure I did what she asked. Well, even though I did, that trick never actually helped me get over my social anxiety. In fact, I usually only notice other people's eye color, not their names or how the rest of their faces look. You're weird, but I believe you. I don't like interacting with other humans either. They tend to pick on me because of my eyes. It shouldn't come as a surprise that us shy kids got along pretty well. Zeke taught me biology and chemistry after class, while I helped him with his Spanish homework. Thanks to him, lunchtime isn't as stressful anymore. We could chat away about anime for hours and he's supportive of my fashion obsession. So I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my TikTok account. He still liked to tease me from time to time though. Hi reader, what color are their eyes? You know, the powerhouses, Colin and Amanda over there. No way. I never look pretty guys in the eye because I'll immediately turn into a walking tomato. Same thing for hot girls. I don't want them to think I'm trying to pick a fight with them or something. You're that avoidant? Have you ever made eye contact with anyone here except me? Yep. Jojo, the blue-eyed girl. Blue? You know her eyes are brown, right? She likes wearing contacts. Jojo changes her eye color, hair, and accessories every week. She's quite a chameleon. Too bad she seems so smitten with that boring guy Colin Gray. Wow, someone clearly has a crush on Jojo. <laughs> but actually, I think Z could be quite a catch too, if he wasn't so insecure about his heterochromia. Speaking of Jojo, have you heard about her Halloween party? What about it? Well, I thought about going, but I have no costume. Forget it. It's not like she'd notice me there anyway. No, you should definitely go. I can help in the costume department. So, here we are. I'd successfully transformed my timid friend into King Lelouch. Who else but Zeke and his unique eye colors could pull this off? As his personal stylist, he insisted I come with him. I'm not even dressed up though. Oh man, I can hear my heart pounding already thinking about how many people will be in there. But I'm not the type to abandon my friend. So let's go. As soon as everyone saw his majesty, they went silent. Then erupted when he flipped his cape. Look at him. <laughs> his ego must be through the roof right now. I then swiftly stepped back to a corner. So, this is what a house party is like. Suddenly, I overheard two girls talking. Aesthetic is definitely from our school, or Zeke had some connections. Yeah, I swear this is the exact same outfit Aesthetic has been prepping on her channel. Oh, come on. There could be hundreds of Lelouch costumes during this spooky season. Girls, please stop speculating. Aesthetic is totally not from this school. I- Hey there, what's your costume? A shy, cute girl? I- I- um, nice Stranger Things shirt. Yeah, I look even better than Eddie, don't I? Um, yeah, totes. So I have this thing. Gotta go, bye! Then they ran straight out of there. That was too much socializing for one day. After that party, I noticed Zeke started to hang out with Jojo and became much more confident. I was happy for him, but he was no longer the same guy. One time, we agreed to study together in the library, but he stood me up. When we met the following day, he said he hadn't touched his homework yet because he was out with Jojo. And then asked to copy mine. Sure, fine. But when he was done, he flat out refused to teach me chemistry as he was too busy. Things were that way for a while. Until today when I found out the shocking truth. Esther, I only keep her around to do my Spanish homework. You know she's a total buzzkill. Excuse me? Your free homework trial has expired. So much for we're friends, huh? Everyone, look! Someone finally came to some self-realization. How adorable! <laughs> Tell them, Zeke! Did you know she has to make her own clothes? Pathetic! Who was this guy? He's the total opposite of the boy I'd got to know over the past couple of months. Am I in the upside down? It's over. Zeke and I were practically strangers now. Back to my gloomy and lonely life.
Annoyingly, I saw Zeke again that day, this time on the school paper. This smug jerk gave an interview on the now-famous Lelouch look. However, in that article, Jojo claimed to be aesthetic, the creator behind that costume, while Zeke backed up her entire story. What in the world? And Jojo even showed some of the sketches that I shared on my account. I was furious and went to confront Jojo, but somehow, she didn't seem to be faced at all. <laughs> So what if you're the real aesthetic? I can be her too, don't you think? If you have a problem with that, then let's go sort it out. Attention everyone! This is Esther. You probably don't know her, but who cares? She has something to share. The floor is yours, girl. Everyone's gaze turned towards me. Holy moly, where should I look? Why is this so different from talking to the camera? My entire body went into crisis mode. God no, something's coming up. Run! Although I calmed myself down, I couldn't face anyone right now. This is the worst day of my life. Suddenly, someone tapped my shoulder. Amanda? What does this social butterfly want? Did she just ask me if I was okay? Okay? No, I'm not okay. Why is it that girls like you and Jojo, who already have everything, always want to take away everything? Hey, I'm just trying to be nice here. If it wasn't for my silly little friend... What? What are you talking about? Never mind. Sorry, but you don't seem okay. Come with me. I think I know how to make you feel better. Come on. Skipping one class won't kill you, but bad mental health will. I wiped away my tears and went with Amanda, even though I barely knew her. But she had a point. The last thing I need right now is a stuffy classroom. Here it is. Go inside. There'll be someone who can help you. That's weird, but all right. I stepped inside, and it was like being hugged by the smells of wood and paper. It felt healing, for sure. I was browsing through the store, then saw Colin walk over. Startled, I stuck my face into an empty slot on a bookshelf to avoid him, but... <coughs> this place is filled with dust! Surprisingly, Colin only smiled and gently wiped the dust off my face. Um, if you're looking for your girlfriend, Amanda just left. She's not my girlfriend. And actually, I asked her to bring you here. Wh what Why? Just calm down. I got you something. How do you know my favorite genre? Because I've seen you read to calm yourself down before. Turns out, Colin had been observing me from a distance for some time, so he even remembered what I usually read. He was hesitant to talk to me though, afraid that all the unwanted attention he might attract would make me feel uncomfortable. But now, everyone knows I like you. Sorry about that. Don't be. It's my fault and my anxieties. I can help you with that. Esther, would you go to prom with me? How will that help? It will. Trust me. Oh, his eyes are... gray? I realized I've been talking to him all this time just fine without using the old trick. What if this guy really could help me? On prom night, Colin drove me there. While he was parking his car, I waited in front of the venue. Out of nowhere, Zeke approached me. Listen, there's not much time. You gotta listen to me. Jojo plans to give you an award, but it's only to get you to stand on the X mark on the stage where the trap door is. She wants to humiliate you in front of the entire school because you're with the guy she likes. So be careful. What game are you trying to play here? Why are you telling me this? I want to make things right. Jojo took advantage of my feelings for her, and I was too blind to see that she only liked Colin, and she's been using me to hurt you. This is my chance to make it up to you, so please, don't go up there. It's a trap. Stop it already. I won't let you make a fool of me again. Right on time, Colin came to the rescue. Haven't you done enough? Stay away from her. I'm truly sorry, Esther. Inside, we were greeted by Amanda. Congrats, bro. I'm finally free from the Collins Rumor Girlfriend label. Jojo must be green with envy seeing how cute you two are together. Right. She's here, as well as hundreds of other people. Nope, I can't do this. I quickly crawled under a table and curled up into a ball. Still, Colin remained patient. You are absolutely stunning tonight. Honestly, your dress is amazing. Come out. Let the whole world see you. The world will only laugh in my face. Okay, then let me join you. It's actually quite cozy down here. What are you doing? Well, tonight is a special night, and my date's a special girl. So I figured we could totally enjoy it in an unusual way. I feel like my insides just turned into a hot, liquidy mess. Who would have thought that I could meet someone who goes out of their way to make me happy? We chatted for a while, then noticed that the lights outside were dimmed for the slow dance. Let's go. Hand in hand, Colin and I swayed to the melody, feeling like we were the only people in the room. 
Then, the music suddenly stopped. They were about to present tonight's awards for remarkable students. And now, best dressed of the night award goes to Esther Crawford. No way. What Zeke said immediately came to my mind. I turned around to see Zeke looking concerned and shaking his head. Maybe he'd been telling the truth after all. You don't have to go up there if you don't feel like it. Colin was as understanding as always. But then I saw Jojo's smug face. I couldn't let her win again. So I mustered all my courage and stepped onto the stage, but steered clear of the X mark Zeke mentioned. Thank you, everybody. But I believe another person deserves this award much more than me. She's none other than our hardworking class president, Jojo. That's so sweet of you, but it's yours. Please, step up to receive it. You mean here? No, one step forward. Here? Jojo became impatient and rushed towards me. No, you have to stand here! Right back at you, Jojo. Have a taste of your own medicine. Now that's some headline material for the school paper. <laughs> so, today is the day. My long overdue face reveal. This is such a beautiful dress, right guys? If you're wondering who this strange girl is, Hi, I'm Esther, and I'm the person behind at Aesthetic. This dress right here, it's what I wore to senior prom. Settle in, I'm doing a face reveal and story time video. I was skipping to the kitchen to see the apple bag dad had prepared for my school picnic. Aww, how thoughtful of him. I excitedly took a bite, but it tasted like it had been left to rot for a decade. I frantically checked the bag and saw this was not the only bad one. Dad! Hey, I'm Doris, and things like this are an everyday occurrence for me. My dad's clumsy and colorblind, two contributing factors that sure make life interesting. Since mom passed away, I had to watch him like a hawk, else you betcha he'd mess stuff up. One time he roasted a turkey, but it was so raw as if it would jump off the plate and run around the house. And on my last birthday, he got me a pair of mittens with one bright orange and one neon green. I reluctantly tried them on, looking like a clown while people burst out laughing. Despite all that, he's still an awesome dad in my eyes. A super talented artist with incredible artwork, provided he lets me label the paint colors. And also a really big supporter of my dream. From the first time he helped me skate on the lake, I knew it was my life's calling. If I can be an artist even though I'm colorblind, how can just a few bumps stop you from being a figure skater? Bravo! I'll definitely give him a 100, except that he does have one bonkers rule. No dating until I'm 18! Whatever, it's not like I gave boys much thought. The only boy I spoke to was my neighbor, Ben, and dad seemed to like him. That kid's pretty good. He likes drawing and artists are caring people, just like me. <laughs> and he seems to not attract it to girls, either. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but it's true that we can never be a couple. His mushy manner is definitely not my type. Anyway, it's super fun having him as a friend. Since we were little, Ben always went along with anything I asked, from drawing me a unicorn picture from my room, giving me his only ice pop, to more exciting things, such as knocks and runs, and covering the neighbor's car in toilet paper. <laughs> And now, he always escorts me to my skating practice a few towns away, and just sits there scribbling something until I finish. This whole month I've been practicing so hard for the upcoming big competition in town. I'm gonna bring a medal home! This is my time to shine! I started gliding, letting the rhythm control my movement. The cold, calming breeze pushed against me like I was flying. It's time for an axle jump. I sprang into the air like a cotton ball, but suddenly lost my balance and fell flat on my face. As a result, I was ranked 29 out of 30. Duh. But surprisingly, there was one judge giving me all high marks. Finally, someone saw my potential. I was beaming when this cute guy approached me. Hi, I'm Luke. Just wanted to say that you were absolutely on point out there. Oh, he's that guy. I really want to get to know you more. How about we hang out together? I'll take you somewhere as special as you are to me. This is definitely against dad's rule, but oh boy, his killer smile made my stomach swoosh. So I ended up saying yes. I excitedly told Ben, but he gave me this sour face look. Hey, your dad will not be happy if he knows this. Just don't let him know. Luke is an expert, so he can help me hone in on my talent. You will keep this a secret, won't you? So here's my first date ever. Luke was so sweet. He complimented my ice skating and constantly gave me these loving looks. Our food arrived and delish. Bon appetit. I daintily tried the mashed potato and immediately felt the delicious taste of warm butter and chives and something pointy? A hairpin? 
I quickly stood up, demanding to see the manager, but Luke stopped me. Babe, you found the gift I prepared for you. Then he grabbed the hairpin and wiped it on his shirt and put it on my hair. <laughs> Maybe this was a normal thing for guys to do on dates, right? Only his gifts show didn't stop there. Later I found a ring in my steak, then a keychain in my salad. You're cute, just like this Lotso. Isn't he the bad guy? But the cherries on top were the movie tickets in my sandwich. Luke, what's this about? I just hope we could bond over watching movies together. You hate it that much? N no, no, I didn't mean that. Think about it. It was kind of weird, but also the sweetest thing that had ever happened to me. Luke had a funny way of showing it, but he made me feel special and giddy. And maybe in love? Before I could think straight, he was leaning closer to me. I closed my eyes and was ready for the most romantic kiss ever. But why were his lips so hard and unmoving? What? The menu? And holding it was... Dad? You know this crazy old man? I am her father. Then Dad dragged an extra chair over to our table, plopped down, and started babbling on. Then, when Luke wasn't looking, Dad poured pepper into his coffee. Before I could say anything, poor Luke took a sip and spat it out everywhere. Mm, sorry. I thought it was sugar. You see... I'm colorblind, so it was an honest mistake. After that, he accidentally splashed the sauce on Luke's shirt, then grabbed his glass of red wine and poured it over Luke, saying he was trying to clean it. Enough! Your old man is insane! No one will ever date you again! Then he stormed away. I was furious! How could Dad embarrass me like this? You're controlling, crazy, and do the stupidest things! You don't allow me to be me, and you just scared away my date! None of his apologies could move me. I had the right to make my own choices without dad interrupting and being ridiculous. So I used my savings. I moved out of my home to start my new life. This freedom was greater than great. I could talk to any guy and go on as many dates as I wanted. Only, I know there's always were extra eyes on me. Do you get the feeling someone's watching us? No way. It's just you and me. I've had a great time. Do you want to do it again? Ugh! What the fudge? If Dad thinks he can stop me by messing around like this, he's totally wrong. It did quite the opposite instead. I started dating loads of guys, even if I didn't like them that much. It was so nice being spoiled by boys, and my room was always full of their presence. I updated Ben all about my dating stories, but he just frowned. Yo, slow down. You want to speed date the entire town? Man, it's just dating. It's not like I've agreed to be their girlfriend or anything. But you don't even know them, or what their intentions are. My dad doesn't understand me. Why now you sound just like him? Fine, don't feel like you need to come here or give me rides or anything. I can make my own way to school and get my date to come with me to practice from tomorrow. I'm sorry, Doris. Ignore me. I'm probably just overthinking stuff. Yeah, Ben's Ben. <sighs> He's still the one I could count on after all. Anyway, being a serial dater can cause troubles. I muddled up Gregory's interest with Ivan's. And I forgot I already told Anton my hilarious story the third time already. I was late for my date with Hector because my previous shift with Ryan went on longer than I expected. Then being so exhausted from all of this dating, I fell asleep during my meal with Christian. Luckily for me, Ben was always there to help. What's up? You look exhausted. I don't know. Dating was fun at first, but now it left me no time to rest, and now I can't even distinguish those guys. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? Nothing. It's just nice not having to share you with an alphabet of guys. Don't worry. You're the only B in my life. One day after school, a group of boys surrounded me and started accusing me of being a cheater. Hey, it wasn't like I was anyone's girlfriend, so it wasn't classed as cheating. I'm still single, so I can go on many dates as I can. Only, my outburst seemed to make them even angrier. As all these guys shouted at me, a cop walked over. Hang on, is that dad? Hey, hey, you boys stop bothering this young lady right now. I just finished a karate class already. I'll give you a piece of my mind. See? Hiya! Hiya! What a bunch of weirdos. Thank God Dad came here on time to save me. But it's such a shame that he saw I was a helpless failure at everything. So my shame became rage. Who asked you to show up in magazine? Quit bugging me with all your nonsense. I can handle this myself. When I returned to my apartment, Ben was sitting there waiting for me. Overwhelmed with everything, I burst into tears. He pulled me into an embrace and I instantly felt better. But then... Doris, stop with the games and just go home. 
games? This isn't a game. This is my life. I deserve to live it how I want to. You're too much of a coward to ever understand that. As soon as I said it, I regretted it. Ben looked so hurt and mad. He just shook his head and left. I honestly thought he was the one person who would never leave. But whatever, I didn't need him or dad either. Now I had to prove to dad that I was mature enough to handle independence and could find someone much better than Ben beside me. Just wait and see. Told you. Now God bless me with this guy, Mark, a super strong and macho BF who was always ready to protect me. Babe, look out. What? Just let me handle this. Then he moved me out of the way and punched right to the wall. Wow, that's a mosquito. Thank you for saving me. One time, we were strolling through the school's garden when I spotted Ben. I immediately gave Mark a cute damsel in distress look and said, Babe, I'm so tired. I think I'm gonna pass out. Don't worry. I'll take you to the hospital. Suddenly, he lifted me over his shoulders and carried me off. My head was spinning and it made me want to faint. Literally. I begged him to put me down and let me sit for a while. Then, I suddenly saw Ben frowning at me. Ha, huh, seeing me totally fine without him, how can he not be annoyed? But who was that? She started staring at his art passionately. Then, can you believe it? She asked him to draw her, and he agreed. I can't stay here watching this ridiculous play. So I grabbed Mark's hand and pulled him away. But that night, I kept tossing and turning, and the image of Ben and that girl couldn't get out of my head. No, no, no big deal. They were just super irritating, that's all. Too many things happened, and now it's time for me to focus on my figure skating dreams again. With my sugar plum. As he went off to buy us some drinks, who should come over to me but my first date disaster, Luke? Oh, you're still ice skating. Just give up already. I only give you a high score so you date me. Don't flatter yourself. By the way, your crazy old man's still doing good? Shut up. My dad was right about you, you jerk. Jerk? Okay, this jerk will tell the rink manager to ban you from coming here for good. I stared at him, open mouth, not knowing what to say, when out of nowhere Ben appeared. I don't think the skating committee would be impressed by your fake scores, do you? All it would take is one email and you can kiss your position on the judging panel goodbye. How dare you! Then he left in anger. Right at that moment, Mark returned. Babe, skating sucks, just quit it. Let's go for some trampoline then. Dars, go practice. No one dares to ban you now. Who the freak are you? Mark, stop! That's Ben, my friend. Uh, no. Just an acquaintance. Doris, watch yourself with that guy. It's none of your business. Let's go, Mark. Bye, loser. The next day at school, I saw Ben with that girl again. My heart thumped in sadness, and I don't even know why. Maybe I was so used to having Ben around me, and honestly, I missed him a lot. Mark soon followed my gaze over to Ben. Isn't that the dude from the ice rink? Why are you gawping at him? He was lunging toward Ben right after. I grabbed his arm trying to stop him, but he pulled me away instead to a corner. You are my girl. Remember that. In front of me was a total stranger. Not the normal Mark I know. He was supposed to protect me, but now all I felt was scared. I couldn't move. Mark leaned over to kiss me, and I immediately blocked him. What? How dare you? Oh no, I'm screwed. Ah, uh, terrorizing your own girlfriend, I see. Nice. Ben? Right on time. You're so done with me. Then Mark grabbed a flower pot and charged at Ben, but I panickedly pushed him over before he could do anything with it. He stumbled about, mumbling something, when Ben's fist came out of nowhere. You, you, you want another punch? Mark waved his fist at him, but then turned around and hurried off. I stared at Ben. I couldn't believe my eyes. He was strong and protective, totally different from the soft Ben I knew all this time. Doris, I think it's time for you to go home. Have you ever wondered why your dad really did that? I... I... Ben was right, and the day's drama made me realize how much I missed Dad. I wonder how he was doing. I arrived back to find Dad sitting all alone, dozing off, amid a pile of mess. He was in stained clothes, and on the easel was an unfinished picture of... Me. With tear-stained eyes, I ran to him and held him tight. I'm so sorry for leaving. I thought I would be okay by myself, but I'm definitely not. I miss you. You're back. I miss you too, darling. I felt so bad for upsetting Dad. When I calmed down, we talked through our problems. Sweetie, I know. It's just hard. You're all I have left. I just worry you're too young to make the right decision and can't bear seeing these idiots hurt you. But Dad, I need experience to learn and grow too. Support me, will you? Um, of course. I always wish you can find a kind man who understands, supports you, and is always by your side, and makes you truly happy. All those qualities reminded me of someone. I kept chasing after trivial things out there, thus forgetting the one who was standing by me all the time. 
so I immediately went to find him. Hey, Ben. Oh, hey. You'll be pleased to know I've moved back in with Dad. Yeah, that is good news. Look, Ben, I'm sorry. I've been an idiot. I took you for granted, and now I feel very bad for this. I, um, was wondering if you'll take me to practice tomorrow? I'll think about it. And I didn't expect to see you confronting a tough guy like Mark. You're not just a timid arty type, are you? Who says I'm timid? I'm only like that when I'm with you because it makes you happy. I'm actually fully capable of looking after myself. And, um, you. <sighs> Look at this gorgeous golden cruise. Isn't it perfect for my 16th birthday? <laughs> Here comes the most exciting part of tonight. Gifts, of course. All the guests lined up eager to hand me their presents. Mr. Robinson bought me this eau de parfum in a dainty gold bottle. Yep, approves. What's next? Ooh, a pair of Jimmy Choo's from the Mitchells? Gold, of course. Nice color, but the heels are far too low. What a bummer. I'll have to pass on this. That's right. Every single thing of mine needs to follow specific standards. Why, you ask? Well, my mom saw me as her beautiful angel deserving wonderful golden luxury since the day I was born with this silky blonde hair and sparkling amber eyes. So much that she immediately changed my nursery interior to gold, along with all my baby clothes and toys to match my features. Throughout my childhood, mom continued to spoil me with life's wonderful golden luxuries. One time, I asked for a piano, then voila! A grand classical one made from pure gold appeared. Can you believe that? Another time, I said I wanted a pony. Then, without hesitation, she took me to a farm to meet Goldie, my new mare with the shiniest golden coat. Mom, thank you so much. Honey, gold is the symbol of power and divinity. You must always remember how special you are and never accept anything less than perfection. And those are the words I've been living up to. Back to my birthday party. It's time for birthday cake. But the flowers are pink. I want it all gold. Chef friends, please crepe them all out and replace them with gold ones. I couldn't believe my birthday was almost ruined because of that. Mom patted me on the shoulder to comfort me. Well, Dad just gave a disapproving look. It's just a cake, Lola. How are you going to fit in out there if you insist on being so picky? Maybe you should join a public school to open up your eyes a little. School? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. Always being homeschooled meant I didn't have any friends. Even the guests today are all my parents' business partners. But Mom opposed the idea immediately as she didn't want me to go through any hardships. Don't worry, Mom. I'll choose a school that fits all my standards. Pretty please. And of course, she couldn't say no. <laughs> so, here I am, negotiating straight up with the principal. I suppose painting your lock of gold and bringing a personal chef to school and such are doable. But I'm afraid we don't have a private piano room. Then build one. Also, we only have outdoor sports field and swimming pool. So, just install a roof? Don't expect me to play sports in the scorching heat. Miss, unlike your previous tutor, not all the teachers here have a doctorate degree, be bilingual, and in the early to mid-thirties. Hmm, <sighs> in that case, no biggie. I'll just find another school then. No, wait. Give me time. As long as your family sponsors the school as promised, I will definitely make it happen. Ha! <laughs> there you go. Finally, it's my first day of school. Immediately, all the students already swarmed around me in all of my noble vibes and fashion sense. No surprises, as this school needs a serious makeover. But wait, that blonde girl looks pretty neat. Ooh, she even carried a yellow Chanel classic flat bag. What a coincidence. Mine's a limited edition. I went to talk to her right away. Her name's Beth, and we just naturally clicked after a brief chat about fashion and cosmetics. Seemed like I found myself an amazing bestie. Every day after class, I took Beth on shopping sprees at Saks for bonding. I got her all the clothes and accessories in gold and yellow, just like mine. I even talked her into bleaching her hair to be bright as mine. We're basically twins now. There's just one problem. Wherever we went, the boys followed. If you go out with me, I'll give you the latest Gucci collection. Sorry, I just bought the whole store. I can pick the stars for you if you want. Is that so? And what should I do with those useless rocks? My dad just bought me a Ferrari. I can take you anywhere. 
Good for you. Too bad my Rolls Royce is there. Bye. Why do they have to make such a scene? There's no way I'd fall for those idiots. I want my Prince Charming who meets all my golden standards. Hmm, how about just letting everyone know my ideal type? Then I can suss out the pyrite from the real deal boyfriend material. With no time to waste, I created an Ask Me a Question story on IG and it has best to cooperate. <laughs> now all I have to do is to list my requirements. The next morning at school, all of the dorks finally left me alone. Oh, except for this guy. Hey Sugarplum, I can be the man of your dreams. So, this is Josh, captain of the soccer team. Also the hottest boy here. It seemed he met all of my standards. Is he my perfect missing piece? I was dead wrong. During our date, he blabbed on non-stop about how terrible it was for him for being too rich and too handsome. Ugh, how I longed to shove the steak right into his mouth and go home. But I suppose he did meet my high standards, so maybe I should give him another chance. <sighs> the next morning, during PE class, Beth dashed toward me, holding a super duper stinky shoe? Lola, Josh lied to you. He's not 6'4". Look at this nasty hiding crease insole. He's only 6'3". Ew, gross. Babe, I I'm sorry. I only did it because- That's enough. Take this stinky shoe away from me. We are over. And so my quest to find true love is at a dead end. Again. Yet surprisingly, luck had smelled on me once more. Later that day, I came to the practice room as usual when my favorite piece of music reached my ears. Oh my, what a heavenly sight. All of a sudden, I felt my heart skip a beat as I unconsciously walked toward that boy. Seems like someone has a really good taste in music. And your skills? Not so bad either. Well, as long as you open your heart to feel its soul, not just learn the notes. Then he stood up and walked away, not bothering to look back at me once. That was a bit snobby, wasn't it? Yet strangely, I stood there dazed. But wait, who am I to swoon that easily? Let's see if he met my standards first. Beth helped me to find out more about him. Turns out he's Connor, the new transfer student who's trying out for the basketball team. So, I immediately went to Ken, the captain, and whispered in his ear, asking him to come up with an excuse to make Connor get a physical exam. At my personal doctor's office, of course. The result is finally in. Natural, blonde, no baldness, check. 6'5", definitely without hide and crease insoles, check. White teeth, no cavities, check. Wow, he ticks all the boxes. Then I rushed to the principal's office, asking him for Connor's school report, and... It was impressive. He's always in the school's top two, actively takes part in extracurricular activities, and he even won a prize in the national basketball competition. Oh my god, he's perfect. But wait, there's one condition left. This should be easy. <laughs> Just a little higher. Higher? Ha! There they are. But these girls were way too obsessed over his abs. Those are mine, okay? That's right. There's no doubt that Connor is my Mr. Right. After that, I shyly handed him a bottle of golden labeled mineral water and asked if he'd like to practice playing piano with me. My heart was thudding like crazy, but he just muttered, Sorry, but I already have a date. Then he went past me to... Lily! What? That nerdy girl with zero social skills? There's no way I can lose to her. I immediately told the principal to switch all my classes to Connor so I could easily approach him. My amazing advisor, Beth, also helped me devise a super detailed step-by-step -step strategy. Soon, Connor will get over boring Lily and fall head over heels for me. First step, scent attraction. Beth told me that Connor loves this no-brand perfume, so I sprayed a bunch of it on and confidently walked into class. But why do people keep sneezing so much? Even Connor was also frowning and holding his nose. Hey Lola, you didn't shower this morning, did you? Spraying a whole bottle of cheap perfume won't help. And the whole class burst into laughter. Ugh, how humiliating. Okay, plan B. Beth suggested a grand confession. Great idea. 
So when school ended, the cheerleaders and I started a formation right in the middle of the entrance to ask Connor out. But before he could react, a girl suddenly lost her balance and dragged everyone down on top of me! Ouch! This time was sure to move him to tears. But when I was cheering for him, Connor somehow missed his shot and the ball flew straight at me, causing me to tumble face first into the armpit of this smelly guy! Yuck! Why did everything keep going wrong? <sighs> Suddenly, I bumped into... Josh? He grabbed my hand and started begging me to take him back. He said he tried all kinds of ways to grow taller and actually managed to reach 6'4 now, so I should stop pursuing Connor and become his princess instead. Jeez, I'm really not in the mood for this desperado. Let go of me! I then ran into Beth while leaving. She came to tell me that she figured out another way to make Connor mine. It seems like he's really into Lily. We have to separate them. So, I called Lily to a corner and told her as long as she stayed away from Connor, I would buy her whatever she wanted. You know, not everything can be bought. Connor isn't interested in you, so you'd better give up. You're just annoying him. What? I didn't expect quiet, nerdy Lily to say that to someone as lustrous as me. Lily's words had been bothering me all day. Was I wrong to continue pursuing Connor? Suddenly, someone ran past the window and splashed an entire bucket of paint onto Lily. I sat there baffled at what had just unfolded, when Connor immediately took his jacket off and covered Lily up. You're behind this, aren't you? You've really crossed the line. Stay away from us. Wait, he thought I did that? It's true I didn't like Lily, but I just wanted her to stay away from him. I never wanted her to be covered in ghastly purple paint. But the worst was yet to come, as the next day, Connor arrived at school with pitch black hair. Y your beautiful hair! Wh why did you ruin it? But Connor just tutted at me and tried to pull Lily away. You know, there's so much more to Connor than his hair color. Do you even like him for him, or just because he happened to meet all of your absurd standards? If you're really into him, why not change your standards for him? I was speechless. Lily was right. I really thought all those standards were enough to make up an amazing boyfriend. Then I realized how Josh had what it takes. Still, I didn't want him. I only wanted Connor. Let's go, Lily. Someone this naive and spoiled will never understand what true love is. Leave her to her scheming. Wait! Why do you keep insisting that I'm the one who harmed Lily? Drop the act. I know that paint stunt was just one of your many dirty tricks. Beth's already sent me the video where you failed to bribe Lily. Huh? Beth? Why did she do that? I was still clueless when suddenly the principal called Beth to his office. I rushed there to find out the culprit splashing paint on Lily was caught, and he revealed that the mastermind was Beth. At first, she tried to deny it, but when the boys showed us their texts about the deal, she had to tell the truth. You, you stole everything from me. Before you came here, I was the it girl, but now people only see me as your replica. Why are you so obsessed with that hideous golden color and your stupid standards? I can't believe Josh actually likes you while well, I was the one by his side when you dumped him. Huh? So Beth liked Josh all this time? She even accepted to date him in secret. But turned out Josh only treated her as a side piece while he tried to win me back. If I can't have Josh, you can never have Connor. Unbelievable! So all this time, I'd let a fox guard the geese. I couldn't bear this place any longer, so I skipped class and went straight home. That night, on seeing how upset I was, Dad came to comfort me. I cried and told him all about my love life and friendship troubles. Honey, maybe it's time you saw others differently. Those standards don't mean anything. You should open your heart and allow yourself to see the good in people. Dad was right. I was so dead set on them that I couldn't see the true nature of the people around me. I chose Beth and Josh based on those standards, but both of them let me down. Meanwhile, Connor deliberately broke them, yet I couldn't shake him from my mind. The standards were like my music sheets. I played each note correctly, but I was so caught up in the practical side of it that I'd forgotten to embrace the soul. So the next morning, I went to apologize to Connor for the troubles I caused him and Lily. I just want you to know, I really like you, no matter what color your hair is. But may I ask you one question? 
What is it about Lily that you like so much? What? You think I'm dating Lily? <laughs> She's my cousin. Uh-oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> but wait, in that case, does that mean I still have a chance? Do you remember when you were 10, you participated in a children's piano contest? A gold necklace was stolen from the hotel you were staying at. Yeah, I just have a vague recollection about that incident. The suspect was a blonde boy, a female employee's son, but I noticed the necklace peeking through a man's pocket instead. Leave the boy alone! This man is the thief! So that kid was Connor? He was grateful and super impressed with the innocent and righteous girl back then that he recognized me right away the day we met again. However, when he saw how cocky I was, he thought I'd change for the worse and ignored me. Now I see, the admirable girl I know is still there after all this time. So I wouldn't mind if we start getting to know each other anew. Really? Wish me luck this time, you guys. <laughs> Hi, Melanie here, and I'm hanging on the edge of my seat to hear the results of this year's science fair. I know I might not look like a typical studious girl, but I'm definitely serious about school. Ooh, one second. The winner of West High Science Fair 2023 is Harry Silver. That means the runner-up is Melanie D'Angelo. Congratulations to you both. Please come onto the stage for your awards. Man, I can't believe I'm second to him again. We'd been literally swapping first and second place on every leaderboard since we were kids. Ugh, so unfair. Look at him. All he did was partying and pulling silly pranks, yet he's still on the honor roll, while I had to study day and night to maintain my straight A's. Mmm, mom's taking quite long. What's that commotion over there? This calls for a celebration. What do you guys think? Olive Garden? Yes! yes. Jeez, can you keep it down just a smidge? Come to think of it, people like Harry just have it all, while I only have mom by my side. Oh, she came just in time! Dad left us for another woman a while ago, so my mom had been struggling every day being a single mom. She must be really sad and lonely, so I'd never mention Dad anymore. Poor her. The more I felt for Mom, the angrier I was at Dad. Only my bestie, Izzy, knew about this, cause, you know, it's hard to open up when you're from a broken home. Luckily, there's one thing in this world that could raise my spirits, as well as my heartbeat, in these dark, gloomy days. My dreamy crush, Cameron. Last year of middle school was coming to an end, so I gotta make a move with Cameron fast. The problem was, every time I got close to him, that party pooper appeared out of nowhere to make fun of me. He kept calling me melanin cause that's what you lack, and bothered me nonstop. We had never gotten along, but seriously, what's wrong with him lately? He picked on me way too much, and why only me? I can't believe everyone thinks he's a model student. To me, Harry's no more than the most annoying bug. All right. Hair, makeup, pearly white teeth, check. I'm giving it another go today, waiting for Cameron at his locker with my love letter in hand. As soon as I saw his gorgeous face, I took a deep breath and put up the sweetest smile, but all of a sudden, someone messed up my hair from behind. Ouch! I turned around to see the culprit. Harry, you look hot. And it generates electricity, too. Now you can charge your phone with your hair. Thank me later. <laughs> Oh my god! Nobody should see this Medusa hairdo! My plan to confess failed again before it even started. All thanks to that clown Harry. Wait, isn't that my dad? He was walking out of the principal's office with a much younger woman and a boy my age. From what I gathered, they're saying that his son would go here. Seeing how my dad's starting a new life with his new family, I couldn't help but feel sorry for mom. This is all that woman's fault. If she just disappeared, things could go back to the way they were. But that's merely a wish, and me and mom just have to put up with this boring, unhappy life day by day. Voodoo for dummies? Was some higher power listening to me? This sounds like an answer to my problem. I ordered the book immediately. I started studying all kinds of spells and rituals in it as soon as the package arrived. Voodoo dolls? Interesting. The next day, I went to find Izzy ASAP. Hey, I'm thinking of using a voodoo doll on my dad's new wife to bring my parents back together. What do you think? Does it really work? I don't think. Yo, Wednesday. Sorry. <clears throat> Yo, knock off Wednesday. <laughs> Harry Silver, you are so dead. But wait a second. You know what? We can test it out. Harry would be the perfect guinea pig. What? 
Him? He's just being his playful self. What if voodoo actually works? Harry doesn't deserve it. Well, I don't think so. Let's make a doll for our little preppy boy then. Crocheting a doll's easy. However, the tricky thing was getting my subject's hair, and you bet I won't get physically close to Harry even if someone pays me to. So I got this, a Ouija board. It will help me figure out the code for his locker. There must be a few strands stuck on the fancy hairbrush that he kept inside. Ugh, but none of the combos worked. This is the tenth time already. How about this? There we go. But there were only books inside. Ah, uh, boring. Then the soccer team's changing room it is. I will definitely find something on his uniform. Let's see. Harry, silver. There it is. Aha, gotcha. I was about to flee the scene when I suddenly saw a boy with only a towel around his waist. Ah! I sprinted to the door and dashed straight through the hallway. That was close. Okay, I still had a voodoo doll to finish. And it's done. I excitedly show Izzy last night's work. Pretty good, huh? It has Harry's hair, too. What? How do you know it's really Harry's? What if it's somebody else's? Well, I-, I... Hey, did you hear some perv with panda eyes was creeping around the boys' changing room yesterday? Go away. But don't worry. Starting today, we'll take turns guarding the entrance to catch them. Oh, what a coincidence. You fit the culprit's description perfectly, melanin. But you're definitely not that pervy, are you? <laughs> I was so mad, I felt smoke coming out of my ears. I wish my gaze could kill that brat. Mel, you're squeezing the doll's arm. It's gonna come off. Whoops, my bad. Next time I saw Harry, he had bandages all over his right arm. Hang on, did I do that? Feeling guilty and curious, I approached him. Hey, what's wrong with your arm? It's been in pain since yesterday for no reason. My doctor said nothing's wrong, but I kept feeling like someone's squeezing it really hard. Ugh, there it goes again. Oh, spooky. It means the doll is truly magical. I immediately came running to tell Izzy, and of course, she was shocked too. But hold up, nosy, arty? How long has he been standing here? This guy clearly had heard everything. He kept reaching for my doll. No way. He'd tell the whole school about it. Then suddenly, Harry sat down next to me. Melanie, my arm hurts. Feed me. Uh... What's he pulling now? Can't he see I'm in the middle of something? Right at that moment, Artie snatched my doll. Leave it to me. No, Artie, no! Not with milk in his mouth! Oops, sorry, I felt so nauseous all of a sudden. That was more than enough to make all of us firm believers. But maybe I should stop. I do feel guilty for dragging Harry into this. That afternoon, when I was about to throw the doll in the trash can, I saw Cameron walk towards me. Did Christmas come early? Hey, I was wondering if you're... Yes, I've been waiting so long for this day. An occultist? What? I mean, Artie was going off about a voodoo doll of yours, so I thought you might know a thing or two about love spells. But if that's not true, I'm sorry. Um, what do you need a love spell for? Then he revealed he wanted to put a spell on his crush, Regina. So all this time, I had no chance with him at all? But hey, a love spell sounds like a brilliant idea. It could ensure my parents' reunion too. Sure thing, but I'll need your hair as well as Regina's. Also, some of your personal items for the spell to work. Obviously, I'll use his stuff, but in a love spell for me. And you know what I gave him? It's all junk with some of my poodle's fur. <laughs> a few days later, I found a gift box in my locker from Cameron. My spell worked. I'm about to have a boyfriend and reunite my family. But before I could carry out that long-awaited plan, Artie came to me with a difficult request, making a voodoo doll of Brad, some transfer student who already established himself as a vicious tough guy. That sounds dangerous, and I already promised myself not to use voodoo anymore. Don't believe me? See for yourself. Then, I followed him and witnessed another student being picked on by a much bigger guy. Hey, isn't he Dad's stepson? Okay, this Brad guy deserves it. So I agreed to help Artie. The next day, I approached Brad after class where he usually messed with other students. I managed to sneak up behind him and get one strand of hair. Oh no, busted. I quickly put the hair in the doll. This better work. Come on! Why isn't it working? And why now? Pesky little thing. Stop! Stop. I know those voices. Thank goodness. Touch her and you'll regret it. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll call the police. Brad just scoffed and left. Phew, what are you both doing here? And Harry, I thought your arm hurt. Then Harry and Izzy finally told me that voodoo had never been effective. Izzy knew that Harry only picked on me because he liked me? 
That's why she tried to stop me from using voodoo on him. But she couldn't, so she then told Harry everything. To be honest, I found your attempts quite amusing, so I acted like they were successful to humor you and myself. I was gonna stop, though, but when you were being sweet to me and asked about my arm, I decided to keep it up. Oh. My. God. My bestie had been friends with my mortal enemy all along. Behind my back? Am I a joke to you? Why are you here? To make fun of me even more than you already did? Because I got worried when I heard you're going after Brad. Melanie, you're the smartest girl in school. I don't understand why you're doing all these dumb gimmicks. Yeah, you've been acting strange lately. Since when are you superstitious? What other choice do I have? Voodoo or at whatever cost? I need to get my parents back together. And that punk Brad is my dad's stepson. He deserves whatever comes to him for ruining my life. And you know what else? Both of you get out of my sight for good! Then I stormed off. After that day, I no longer talked to Izzy, and Harry's relentless pestering finally stopped. But honestly, it felt a bit empty without them, especially with the upcoming school field trip. Of course, I'm still coming. Who needs them anyway? This is the chance for Cameron and I to be closer now that we're talking on the regs. It's gonna be the best trip ever. I've never been the outdoorsy type, but does camping involve this many physical tasks? Almost done. What on earth is that? Isn't he under my love spell already? I mean, he even gave me a present. I was still in shock when Cameron came over to help with the tent. Thank you. No need to. I can't thank you enough. That spell of yours worked wonders. What does he mean by that? Then, out of nowhere, Izzy tapped on my shoulder. I've tried to tell you. Those two have been flirting for a while now. I guess Cameron just needed your spell as a little spiritual push. That means none of these has ever worked? There's absolutely no hope of bringing my family back? Feeling devastated, I burst into tears and ran off. I was running without looking and bumped into... Brad? Melanie, right? Just who I want to see. Or should I say, my dear stepsister, your mama sent you here. Let go of me and piss off. <laughs> I wonder how pathetic she had to be to have her husband walk out on her. <laughs> if this was any other time, I would have fought back. But after all that just happened, I've lost all of my will to do anything now. Out of the blue, I saw someone charge at Brad and land a brutal blow on his face. I said I'd make you regret touching her. I had to stop Harry before he messed Brad's face up beyond recognition. It's time we got out of here. Why did you come help me after everything I said? I'm kind of used to your coldness. Besides, my love language is following you around and teasing you until you notice or get mad at me. Silly. I know. On a different note, I thought you knew that voodoo was useless. Yeah, so I thought of a love spell to get my parents back together. Then my family will be whole and happy again. But I know it now. There's no such thing as magic. Why not? Magic is alive and well inside you, and it is called forgiving. It cannot punish those who hurt you and your loved ones, but it can help you let go of your pains and sufferings. What are you trying to say? I mean, no magic can make your dad come back, but someday the pain he caused you won't ache anymore. Eventually, your mom and you will heal and lead a fulfilling life without him. I never took this goofy guy for the philosophical and mature type, but I guess he's right. I'd been so caught up in my own bitterness that I didn't realize moving on was an option. When my mom picked me up, I decided to finally ask her about my dad. Unexpectedly, mom told me that of course it was sad at first, but she's actually doing fine these days. Life's supposed to have its ups and downs. As long as we welcome them with open arms, everything will turn out all right in the end. After all, your father will have the life he wants while we get on with our our lives. Turned out, I was the only one chasing the past all this time, when what I actually needed was closure. Mom's words were more than enough to put this grieving period behind me. My last year as a middle schooler was quite eventful. Brad was no longer a problem since he got a taste of Harry's fist. Did I mention that we became a trio of best friends? For now, at least. Harry never stopped his shenanigans, but instead of getting annoyed like before, I found him quite adorable and endearing. Oh, just kiss already? Izzy! Hello, my name is Dixie, and I have quite a peculiar story for you today. Shout out to Animated Story Show for telling my life story, so please like and subscribe to the channel. I used to have a perfect life. My mom is a lawyer for a top law firm, and she's rarely home, but my dad works from home. And together, we were the best team. And Dixie keeps running, and oh, oh, can she make it? Whew! Yes, she does!
Woohoo! And she shoots and she scores! Oh my god, what is going on here? Today is our father-daughter tournament. And guess who's winning? Well, this tournament is over. David, you cannot continue to raise our child like a rascal. Clean this place up and come help me make dinner, Dixie. My mom was a total killjoy. At dinner, I was excited to discuss my upcoming birthday with my mom and dad. I finally wrote down what I want. There is only one thing on the list. We have talked about this. You are not getting a sister. But why? Pretty please, mom. I promise I will help with the baby and I will even stop playing. No, we are not having any more kids. Write something else on your list. But mom, it's all I want. Then want something else. Come on, baby. There must be something else you want. A baby is quite a tall order. If you guys don't give me a sister, I'm going to go on a hunger strike until you listen to me. Suit yourself. Ugh, I'm too tired for this. Now let me have my dinner in peace. Of course she wouldn't care, even if I starve myself. I went upstairs and screamed into my pillow. My mom was so impossible. Hey, honey, are you good? Your wife is killing me. Come on, baby, cut her some slack. Having a baby is a big deal, and it might not be a good time for your mom and me because of work and, er, uh, uh, something else. What else? Of course, work is more important to her than us. Your mom might work a lot, but trust me, she loves you. And I have the perfect gift for your birthday. It is going to be amazing and better than a crying baby. I doubt that, but we will see. A few weeks later, on the eve of my 14th birthday, everything fell apart. I was in my room when I heard commotion downstairs. It must be Dad setting up decorations. But then I heard Dad and Mom yelling at each other, so I ran downstairs to see Mom sitting in the dark. Mom, why are you sitting here alone? Where's Dad? And why didn't he do my decorations? Honey, there is no easy way to tell you this, but your dad left us. We have been having issues for a while, and I tried to keep us together, baby, believe me. I tried, but he walked away. Liar! Liar! You are lying! My dad will never do that! I will call him right now, and he will tell me that you are lying! But mom wasn't lying. I called every day for weeks, and dad never picked up the phone. He was really gone. I couldn't believe it. How could he leave me without a goodbye? As if things weren't bad enough, my mother walked into my room one day wearing the most ridiculous country outfit. We are moving to the countryside. What? To the countryside? Why? I figured that being here in this house might be too much. And if we are going to heal, we need a fresh start. New job, new home, new life. And it's summertime, so you have plenty of time to settle before school starts. I am not leaving. What if dad comes back for me? He will not. I don't believe you. You're just trying to take me far away from him. Pack your things. We're leaving today. Mark my words. I will not move. I will not. But of course, mom's way or the highway. Honey, um, there is something I need to tell you about this place. Where we are going is my home. It's the place I grew up. Huh? You never talk about your home, and now all of a sudden we are moving there? I know it's weird, but it's a long story. But believe me, you will understand soon. And you're finally going to meet my sister, Rose. Sister? You have a sister and never told me? God, do I really know anything about you? Oh, well, we're here. I looked up, and I saw the whole farm spreading in front of my eyes. And that's Rose, your aunt. A woman almost as beautiful as my mother stood in the driveway holding a rake. I could immediately sense that she didn't like us. Well, well, look who it is. Why are you here? This is my home, Rose. I don't need to explain anything to you. Home! Please don't make me laugh. Your husband leaves and you remember that you have a home. That's rich. Hi, Auntie Rose. I'm excited to meet you. Sure. She just walked away and continued shoving hay. Rude. But Auntie Rose was more than rude. She was cruel. She never spoke to my mom and me. She always pretended like we didn't exist. And to make it worse, I tried to ask mom what happened between them, but she refused to tell me. Ugh, adults. Feeling a little suffocated one day, I took a walk to the lake when I felt something like a rock hit me. Ugh, what in the coconuts was that? Oh, so sorry. I, I didn't see you coming. I'm Callum. And you must be Dixie. Huh? How do you know who I am? This is a little town. We know everyone. So, how are you finding life away from the big city? It's horrible. Can't wait for my dad to come take me away from here. Yeah, about that, I'm really sorry. My dad left too, so I understand how you feel. 
Listen, I don't know who you are or what you think you know, but my dad didn't leave me, okay? He's just tied up with work. Okay, okay, don't walk away. I'm sorry. Come on, let's see who can skip rocks the farthest. I was so angry at this Callum guy and the rest of the stupid town for thinking my dad left. But the thought of going back to the Cold War at home, I'd much rather stay with him. Turned out, Callum was a breath of fresh air, and soon, we started spending more time together. One night, I was sleeping in my room when my mother walked into my room. Hey, honey, I know that so much of this has been difficult for you, so I brought someone to help. Meet Summer, your adopted sister. I couldn't believe it. For the first time in forever, I ran and hugged my mom. Thank you so much. I finally have a sister, a forever friend. Yes, we are going to be best friends, sister. Summer was just one year younger than me, but she was so energetic and full of adventure. Every morning, she would leave the room before I woke up to explore the grounds. And late at night, she would tell me all the tales of her adventure during the day. Best of all, Summer also didn't like Auntie Rose's attitude one bit. So at night, we would badmouth Rose behind our back until we fell asleep. It was so satisfying. I saw you with Callum today. Hubba hubba, he is so cute. Is he your boyfriend? Ew, no, we're just friends. Okay, if you say so. Guess what I did today? I left the barn doors open, and I'm sure all the animals have escaped by now. <laughs> what? Summer, why would you do that? Because Rose has been rude to us. All she cares about is those animals. And let's see what she does when the animals are all gone. Christ, that's terrible, Summer. Please don't do that ever again. Auntie Rose is going to be so mad at you. Almost as if it was on cue, I heard a barge on my door. Summer jumped and hid behind me. You rat! How dare you! I know you let the animals get out. You are so lucky I got there on time. If not, if not, what? Rose, how dare you threaten my child? Tell your little nuisance to stay away from my property, or I will deal with her. I could feel Summer shivering behind me, so I had to be a big sister and protect her. Auntie Rose, I am very sorry. It will never happen again. Auntie Rose just huffed and walked away. Phew, that was close. But after they all left my room, Summer started laughing. I warned her to never play silly pranks again, but I just knew that she would not listen to me. The next time I hung out with Callum, I told him what happened. Summer keeps playing pranks on Auntie Rose. I'm worried she's going to make Mom and Auntie Rose fight even more. Well, maybe she's just trying to adjust, and it's her own way of acting out. She has to get over it quickly because bitter Auntie Rose doesn't play. What's Summer like, by the way? She's sweet, but she's always busy going on her wildest adventures. <laughs> <laughs> when I got home that day, my mom and Auntie Rose were in a shouting match. I know my child, and she didn't do this. You can be mad at me all you want, but don't accuse my child of something she didn't do. Someone keyed my car. It's you, Dixie, isn't it? I, I didn't do it. I told you. Is this why you came here? To torture me? Haven't you done enough? After all these years, I can't believe that you came back to continue to cause me pain. Rose, please no. Then mom started to cry too. Can you please tell me what happened between you guys? Enough with the secrecy. <laughs> When Rose and I were teenagers, she had a piggy bank where she saved money to get out of this place and start her life somewhere new. She never wanted to stay in the small town. But then one day, your grandparents expected me to take over the farm, and I panicked. So I stole her piggy bank, got on a train, and left. And because I left, Rose was stuck here with a farm. Oh, I hate that I hurt my sister, but I don't regret it. If I didn't leave, I wouldn't have met your dad, and I wouldn't have had you. Oh my god! I can't believe you did that! That's why she hates us! You ruined her life! I know! That's why I came back. I want to fix things, but everyone I love hates me. Your dad, you, and my sister. Maybe I am just a terrible person. What you did was terrible, but... Uh, you are not terrible, Mom. But you have to apologize to Auntie Rose and do whatever it takes to make it up for her. I was happy Mom admitted her wrongdoing and wanted to make amends after all. So, we all had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation when Mom finally had the courage to apologize to Auntie Rose. She was still mad at first, but then... You know I resented you for many years, but because you left me with a farm, I realized how much I loved the land and eventually found my spiritual healing here. So in a way, I have to say thank you, and sorry for being mean to you. We all shared a warm embrace. It felt so good to be a family again.
When I got back to my room, I was glad to see Summer there. Oh, thank God you're here. Where have you been the whole day? Busy wandering around plotting my new prank on Rose. You have to stop messing with Auntie Rose right now. She and Mom actually patched things up. Then I told her everything, but to my surprise, no, messing with her is fun, and I like it. If you don't stop, I'm going to tell everyone. You can try, but no one would believe you. I am the cute and cuddly one. Summer, why can't we just get along? Why do you have to break my heart, just like everyone else? Ask yourself. Don't put that onto me. I was so furious. What type of sister from hell was this? But she was right. No one was going to believe me unless I caught her in the act. But before I could do anything, I got carried away with the work at the farm. One day, Callum and I were helping Mom in the storage house when Auntie Rose ran in. Someone destroyed the chicken coop! Ran a tractor into it! What? That was it! I know who did it! It was Summer! She is the one who has been doing all of it! Not me! I tried to take the fall for her and talk her out of it, but she is not listening to me! Rose looked at me like I was insane! You are a terrible liar! I know you did this! I have proof! She pulled out a video, and I felt like I was being sucker punched! It was me! I was driving the tractor! Then I crashed it and started laughing hysterically! No! That's not possible! I did I didn't do that. Summer did. Summer did all of it. I tried to fix it so Auntie Rose could forgive Mom, but she got upset with me and started doing more daring stuff. Sometimes I found her pranks and fixed them before you saw them, but I couldn't get it all. At this point, everyone was staring at me with so much concern in their eyes. Honey, who is Summer? Summer! My sister! The one you adopted! I... I didn't do that. You have no sister. Wait, I think I know what is happening. It makes sense now. Dixie, Summer is not real. You made her up. That's not true. You know her. I don't, actually. I never met her. Oh, my poor baby. You need help. I am not insane. It's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. Mom and Auntie Rose then drove me to the hospital, where I would be given therapy. Callum also came with us and sat with me in the waiting room. I can't even trust my brain again. I don't even know what's real anymore. Did I also imagine you too, Callum? No, you didn't. I am real, Dixie. And I will be here with you every step of the way. Right then, Mom and Auntie Rose came back after talking to the therapist. Dixie, honey, I'm so sorry for not listening to you and your needs for so long. I knew you always wanted a sister, but I never took you seriously. It was my fault. If I had been there for you, listened to you, and hadn't been so controlling and distant to you, things might have been different. But now I promise I will always be here with you, and you're going to be okay. I promise. W what about Summer? You don't need Summer. You have us. All of us. When I was figuring out what to do next, someone passed by. He was tall and handsome, just like a male character walking straight out of a Japanese manga. But why does it have to be in this embarrassing situation? After what feels like an eternity of bombastic side eyes, he finally got close to me, opened his bag, and pulled out an old pair of shoes. I was dreaming about how he would help me put them on, like in the movies when he coldly tossed the shoes next to me. That should do. Then he just left. Hey, you! Can't you at least help me get out of this? The guy sighed, then turned around to help me. Do you even know who I am? Of course I do, your highness. What's with that attitude of yours? The royal family never cared to visit this poor village. Why is your highness troubling herself here? Is that so? Well, if that's the case, I want you to show me around so I know how my people are doing. Stranger. The guy seemed surprised at my request, but then put on the sweetest smile. My name's Will, and of course, I can give you a tour. Holy mother of God, if his judgy look was enough to make you question your self-worth, his smile could make you feel like you're the luckiest girl in the world. But before you can wander around, you need to blend in first. People here don't really like the members of the royalty. Then he gave me some old clothes from his bag. You can go in there. What? Do I look like I belong in there? No one's gonna judge you. Except some chickens, maybe. Hey, I can behead you in one second. I'm just kidding. You're safe in there. This was really the middle of the cornfield, so I had to go in and got changed quick. This Will guy's better not be fooling around. And he did not. He walked me around and told me about the lives of the villagers here. I was shocked to see the houses in such poor conditions. How come I only see women and children here? Where are all the men? 
Young people, especially men, all went away trying to find jobs. <sighs> the living conditions here are hard. I see. But then, who helps take care of the kids and the elderly? We're all just a big family, so everyone kind of counts on each other to make it through. And you're the only guy around? Actually, I was going to leave too. But then I just didn't have the heart to, so I decided to stay here to take care of everyone. I was shocked to learn about everything. All this time while I was sheltered in my gated castle, attending useless events at the lodge in name of charity. People out here have been struggling. And this guy, Will, has done more for others than I ever did. I was wrong about him. Right then, a piercing voice came shaking the earth beneath my feet. Your Highness! What do you think you're doing? Oh my god, what kind of rocks are you dressed in? Are you trying to harm the princess? Guards, restrain him! No, 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 Grace, I'm fine! Look! The guards finally let go of Will. You can't be out here, princess. You have to return to the lodge ASAP before word gets out. Next thing I knew, I was escorted away. Thank you! I'll return the shoes to you! Man, Grace is always a party pooper. As soon as we got back to the lodge, Grace instantly turned into a talking machine, going on and on about how dangerous it was, how reckless I was. But you know, one of my greatest strengths is selective listening. So I take what she said with a spoon of salt. I mean, a grain of salt. <laughs> <sighs> Everything I just said to you goes in one ear and out the other, doesn't it? Yep, you got that right. <laughs> anyway, I had this idea while cruising around the village. I want to help better the lives of the people there. What else, princess? I'm serious. It's like I finally found my life's purpose as a princess all these years. <sighs> Just don't get yourself into trouble is all I'm asking for. You got it. <laughs> that night, I racked my brain trying to think about how I could help the villagers. Aha! Uh -huh. I'll give them the nicest things in the world, just like how the fairy godmother helped Cinderella. So the next day, I ordered my servants to pack boxes of gifts to deliver to Will and the other villagers. If you could have anything from the royal family, what would you want? I I'm so sorry, princess. I, I don't know what I did wrong. Please don't fire me. Chill out. You're not fired. Just answer me. I, I don't know. Maybe expensive clothes made out of cashmere or mulberry silk would be nice. Right. Pack all the royal gowns then. From blueberry silk, of course. Princess, it, it's mulberry. Yeah, that. What else? Ah, get all my tiaras, too. But that's your tiaras, princess. Nah, I never wear them anyway. Oh, don't forget some royal tableware. And tea sets, too. I want my people to have the most enjoyable dining experience. After having the gifts sent over, I also gave the order to build a tea house in the village where people could read and have a cup of tea together. <sighs> it feels so nice to finally be able to do some real charity. In the days following, I still had to resume my charity duties at the lodge, namely helping out with the laundry. But of course, it was just for photos. Feeling exhausted, I decided to get a massage with Liam and Grace afterwards. But who knows, it would tickle so much. <laughs> it's like a thousand feathers poking at my souls. <laughs> Your Highness, are you okay? Looks like you're dying over there. <laughs> Help! <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, after the massage disaster, it was like something clicked among the three of us. We would hang out together and our favorite thing to do was spilling the tea about the royal family. Well, not literally. The queen mustn't know about this. Nah, it's fine. The queen always acts tough and strict, but did you guys know that she's actually scared of the microwave? <laughs> Your Highness! I heard some other rumors on the streets, too. A royal member once snatched a scar from a woman and never gave it back, just because they liked it so much. Oh, I bet it's Princess Aurora. She's crazy about fashion and all that nonsense. We never get along, though. But just when a maid was putting down a spoon next to me, the butler suddenly flew off the handle. This is the dessert spoon, and that is the teaspoon. How could you not know this? I'm... I'm terribly sorry, Princess. Uh, oh! It's just a spoon. You're excused. Don't worry about it. Agreed. We don't care about those stupid rules. Now, if you could leave us alone. They finally left. Ugh. I wonder if these people ever got bored of themselves being boring. Even though I had fun with Grace and Liam for the past couple of days, I've been longing to get out of the lodge again and explore the grounds. So one time, while Grace was back at the palace running some errands, I immediately took my golden opportunity. I was so excited to see how my people were doing with all the nice things I've sent to them. Oh, I bet they're looking as elegant as the royal family now. Maybe they're busy riding the horses I sent. Oh, actually, they might even be having a tea party now. I can't wait to join them. But when I got there... The village looks the same. And is that the Sovereign's orb they're playing with? No, 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 that's not a toy! And you're holding it upside down! 
That's when I turned to see by the river the woman pounding on the cloves with golden golf clubs from the late king. Just when I was heading towards them, I caught sight of the tea house full of pigs, horses, and chickens inside. Did they seriously turn my elegant tea house into a barn? I guess animals are having a grand tea party in there. Right then, some woman passing by noticed me. Is that the princess? I can't believe she still has the audacity to show up here. I thought she was different, but she's just like the rest of the royal family. A bunch of useless, ignorant snobs. They don't even know what we need. What's all the use in these luxuries when we can't even afford basic necessities? I felt like reality had smacked me in the face for the first time in my life. Turned out I wasn't helping them at all. Just then, I saw Will nearby. But upon seeing me, he just sighed and turned away to leave. Trust me, all I wanted was to help out. But I just don't know how. You should just go back to your lodge, princess. No, no, no. Let me stay here and live with everyone to understand what my people are going through. That's not possible. You grew up with abundance and wouldn't last a day here. That's why I want to learn so I could really be helpful and give everyone what they need. Please help me, Will. He still seemed hesitant. Just treat me like everyone else here. I promise I'll try my best. Will seemed surprised at how determined I was, and he agreed to give me a chance. I was over the moon and ready to start a new venture. But when I got back to the lodge to pack my things, I was informed that the charity program was over and all of us were to return to the palace the next day. I had to go find Liam. Seeing him reading in the garden, I told him I had some emergency that needed my attention here and asked if he could help cover up for me. I was ready to get on my knees if I needed to when... Sure thing. Just do whatever you need to. But aren't you mad? I know I was supposed to be spending time with you just as the queen wanted me to. You know, the marriage and stuff. Girl, I got your back. Saying that, he got on the phone with my mom. Your majesty, the princess and I are enjoying our time together so much and wish to be allowed to extend our stays here. And of course, the queen was more than happy to agree. But I knew there was one more obstacle to overcome. Grace! When I told her I needed to live outside the lodge for a while, she immediately opposed the idea. I'm serious, Grace. I know you worry about me, but I am the princess. I'm supposed to help the very people I rule, but I failed to do that so far. And I'm here enjoying my privileges on my people's hard work. What kind of princess am I? Plus, Liam and I don't have feelings for each other anyway. Grace, you gotta help me. After long hours of arguing, Grace finally caved. I was so ecstatic that I jumped over to hug her. Giddy up! Only, life in the village was slightly different from the palace. People here actually grow their own food. Doesn't everyone's food come from the store? <laughs> no, we don't have stores here. Everything comes from the ground. Even my afternoon chocolate shake with two pumps of mocha? Yes, even your chocolate shake with two pumps of mocha. <laughs> in fact, I bet it's even better. I'll make one for you later. Just then, I saw Mrs. Estelle struggling to pluck up the carrots, so I came over to help her. Don't you worry, I got this. But, uh, uh, who knew the carrot was holding on to dear ground? Just when I was about to give up, it suddenly came off the ground and ended up flying straight over my head, hitting, well... Um, maybe it's better you go feed the chicken. But when I approached the chicken, I saw an egg on the ground, so I picked it up. The chicken suddenly turned to look at me as if they all spotted their sworn enemy. All that was left to do was, RUN! Not until Will came in and saved the day did all the chickens calm themselves down. You seem to know a lot about life here. Of course, I've lived here since the day I was born, though I don't really know who my parents are. Where are your parents? I'm actually an orphan, being brought up by the people here. They didn't have much, but were raising me with all their hearts. That's why I want to stay here and take care of them now that they're getting older. I was touched by his story and realized how nice people could be to each other, against all odds. Let's go fix the roofs. The storm's coming. Is there something you can't do, Mr. Know-it-all? Well, actually, yes. I've been living here for so long, I don't know how to... How to impress a girl. <laughs> Who are you kidding? I bet girls are dying to sweep you off your feet already. Are you? For a second, I found myself lost in the dreamy haze of his eyes. No, no, Mia, you're here to help others, not to fool around. Come on, let's go fix the roofs. Later that day, Will led me to the garden and showed me the traditional way of making chocolate. And just like this, you keep grinding until it becomes a thick paste. I got to try it with Will holding my hand. The two of us were so close together. I could hear my heart pounding against my chest. Is this the rush they all talked about in the fairy tales? 
When we finished, Will made a fresh batch of hot chocolate and gave me one. When I took a sip, a rich, nutty, and earthy flavor instantly warmed me up inside. Will was right! This is better than any Starbucks I ever had! The following days were the most fun I've had in my entire life. I still found it hard to navigate through the hardships here, but Will was always by my side. And the people here, once I got to know them better, they all started to warm up to me too. Every Friday, the whole village would gather around a bonfire to tell each other the oldest tales. Enough with the nightingale. I want to know when we'll hear the happy ending for the tale of Mir and Will. <laughs> we all know the happy ending is as clear as day already. <laughs> I found my cheeks warming up to the jokes. I wondered what was on his mind as I caught Will blushing also. Everything was like a dream, until one morning Will and the other villagers had to go harvest the crop, and I stayed home to help with some chores. While I was hanging the clothes, I got all shook up by a familiar voice. What do you think you're doing, Mia? Hey! Welcome to my coffee booth at Felton High's Flea Market. Just a second, I need to add the finishing touches to this latte. Perfect. Guys, try this. It's the special drink that I came up with for our two-month anniversary, which, FYI, is today. How romantic. What's the name of this drink? I think Patrick should name it. We can call that Paige's Vom. You know, because it reminds me of when we were five and you threw up in the back of my mom's car during our road trip. <laughs> Stop! I'm not kidding! Me neither. It's one of my favorite memories, as that's when I fell deeply in love with you. Or how about, why is everything a joke to you? Just leave. We're done. I'm sorry about that. Ugh, let's start over. I'm Paige, and everyone calls me Perfect Paige, because, well, everything about me is perfect. That must be thanks to my parents. My dad's a hospital director, and my mom's a university president. They both excel in their jobs, juggle family affairs, never quarrel, and always have smiles on their faces. And me, I'm beautiful, smart, and have some talents, such as making drinks. My dream is to run my own coffee shop, on the side of the dream job at the national TV station that I will definitely get. Then I'll come home to my dream boyfriend who's a flawless man that I can count on, and we'll have a perfect love story like my parents. Then why did I choose that funny guy as my boyfriend, you ask? Ugh. Before he became my now ex, Patrick was a close friend since childhood. We lived in the same neighborhood, and it was my friend Doris's birthday, but she came up with a stupid condition that all the girls had to bring along a boy. Ugh, please. This sounded ridiculous, so I presumed it was a joke and showed up alone. Only everyone else had a plus one with them. Paige, you need to stop being so picky and give a guy a chance. How about your bestie Patrick? He's nice, smart, great at basketball, and he's pretty cute, right? No, 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 we go way back. He's all right, I guess, but that's not enough. I, there's no one on this planet who can reach your ridiculously high standards. He's the best you're gonna get, and look, he's also so funny. Patrick's sense of humor is by far his most infuriating trait. Fine, perfect page, you'll just have to show up to the prom alone then, and I doubt that's a perfect thing to do. I guess Doris's words played on my mind, because when Patrick walked me home, I blurted out, Hey, if we're both single after we turn 17, then let's date. Then my perfect school year will end with a perfect prom night with my high school sweetheart, just like in a rom-com. Huh? Have you eaten too much frosting or something? No, of course not. I just can't possibly turn up to prom dateless. Oh, the outrage. As if anyone could ever dare to go to prom without a date. But I'm not just anyone. Such a humiliating thing would be a scratch on the diamond, which is me. Okay, okay. I'll do whatever you want. Time passed by and I concentrated on my studies and my hobby. Then before I knew it, I turned 17 and still didn't have a boyfriend. I heard this strange noise coming from my balcony. Patrick? What is he doing with a rose in his mouth? Hey there, do you remember our oath once upon a time? Okay, fine. From today, I allow you to be my boyfriend. Go home and get ready. Tonight will be our first date. Wait, you serious? It's not a joke. Why are you always joking? All right, all right. Where does my love want to go on our first date? So we started dating and so far so good. Seeing as he'd known me for years, he knew what I liked and what I was thinking. He never argued with me and just did what I asked. And best of all, everyone complimented us and said we were a match made in heaven. There was just one problem. Patrick's sense of humor was ruining the romantic vibe. 
So that brings us to the present and why I ended our relationship. Later that night, Patrick called and apologized, but I confirmed that the breakup was still on as I didn't want to cause strain to our friendship. He seemed pretty surprised by this, but Patrick being Patrick, he soon made light of it. Back to the friend zone. Alrighty. So, no need to pick up Paige every morning anymore. Nice. See you in math class. For some reason, I was a little sad that he'd agreed to do this so quickly, but it had just been a dumb fling anyway, right? But hang on, what about prom? I couldn't lose face with my friends, so I joined a dating app to continue the search for my Prince Charming. Ugh, too short, too nerdy, too glary. And after days of desperately swiping, I finally found a guy that caught my eye. I mean, I couldn't really see his face, but he had to be hot. I messaged him right away, and you know what? We got on so well and soon arranged a date. I fixed my hair one more time and walked over to him. Hello, you. <gasps> Patrick? Surprise, my bae. I'm your perfect mystery partner. Patrick, I swear to God. How do you feel? Angry much, huh? Then now you know how my poor heart felt when you broke it to pieces. <laughs> I was fuming, but Patrick kept up his annoying grin. So you're that starving for love? All right, I know your ideal type way too well. Let me find you a guy. You know, attractive boys tend to hang out in a herd. We'll see. You know, being handsome is only one thing on my list. The first candidate was this guy called Beavis, the basketball team captain. We started talking, and it went well enough for him to invite me to go watch his game. He even winked at me before he scored a perfect three-pointer. All the jealous glances turned to me. Looks like Patrick really found me a good deal. At first, this was kind of cool, but soon all of the love letters and gifts Beavis received got kind of grating. Worst of all, he accepted them all. He didn't seem to be faithful at all. Also, his grades really sucked, and he was always so sweaty. This first candidate is out. Next was Daniel, a cute genius who liked to invent things. I really love how passionate he looks when he's working on something. He's so talented. But he always showed up late to our date with the excuse there was some machine malfunction. His clothes were always stained with grease, and all he talked about was research. Oh, actually, I have zero idea what you're on about. You're so robotic. I went home and already saw Patrick making himself at home in our living room. He must have heard the news. So, sporty boy has too many fangirls. No good. Mechanic boy is too busy. No good. Then maybe a rich boy with a lot of free time could treat you like a princess. Patrick introduced me to this guy called Eric, the school rich kid who showered me with lavish gifts. That was nice, but then his clinginess felt suffocating. He always seemed to be there, and he wouldn't quit calling and texting me. He also spent longer than I did getting ready. No thanks. Why? You're too clingy. If you have too much time on your hands, then why don't you go do something useful? What? I only cling on to you because I care. But I guess I was just wasting my time on useless things because you're just a stubborn, spoiled girl that finds fault in everything and doesn't appreciate other people's feelings. No one's ever spoken to me like that before. Useless? Stubborn? Spoiled? Eric's words were still echoing in my head as I walked home. Then I saw Patrick approaching. What's up? Who got you mad this time? Is it Eric? His downside is being too rich, isn't he? Not Eric, it's you. You deliberately set me up with those weirdos, didn't you? What are you saying? I only chose the guys that suit you best. No, they don't. I don't think you really understand me at all. Oh, really? How well do you understand me then? If you're that confident, then go find me an ideal girlfriend. Fine, maybe you'll quit bugging me if you're taken. Hmm, turns out trying to find a girlfriend for Patrick was trickier than I thought. He's so friendly with everyone, I actually have no idea what his type is. Whatever, he made no effort to find me a nice guy anyway, so I'll just return the favor. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, Nina, I know her, a scandalous hot girl who always goes overboard on the wax statue makeup. I'm pretty sure she likes Patrick, as she's always cheering him from the sidelines during his games. Patrick, let's see what fun date you can have with this girl. The next day, I walked straight up to Nina and asked her if she wanted to go on a date with Patrick. She looked kind of surprised, but then after thinking it over, she agreed. They met at a cafe, and after I introduced them to each other, I sat at a nearby table and observed. I expected things between them to be super awkward, but surprisingly, they seemed to get along quite well. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but they kept bursting out laughing. They acted like they'd known each other for ages. Patrick and Nina bid farewell, and as soon as Nina walked away, I jumped out and asked, How can you have fun chatting with Nina all night? Don't you see her laughing out loud? That's not very ladylike. So she's fun. Everyone has flaws, though I don't even think it's a flaw. It's cute. 
Fine, let's see how long you two can have fun. But in the following days, I still saw Patrick with Nina. Then at school, I overheard Nina talking to her friends. Tonight? No wonder you've been looking so happy all day. Of course, it's going to be a big confession. Huh? They've only been dating for five minutes. I wonder why Patrick liked Nina that much. So I decided to stalk them. I followed them to this posh restaurant. Ugh, so humiliating. Who would have thought that Perfect Page would do something like this? But there is no way back now. They spoke for a bit, then Patrick went to answer a phone call. I thought he was going to plan his confession or something. But then, to my surprise, a man swooped in and sat down with his arm around Nina. That's Beavis! What? How could they be so shameless? I quickly ran to find Patrick, who was chilling in a corner, so I quickly pulled him back to the table. Look, you're being cheated on! Cheated on? What do you mean? The girl who's been clinging on to you for days has been flirting with your teammate. Stop playing dumb, please. Nina is just my friend. She likes Beavis, not me. Nina clearly likes you. She follows you to every game. How could she switch to Beavis out of nowhere? You should defend me, not a stranger like her. Did you forget Patrick and I are teammates? Nina was actually there for me. I agreed to meet Patrick just because I wanted to ask him to talk to Beavis for me. Sorry for misleading you. <laughs> What's with a bulldog's frown? We just successfully match made a couple. Let's go give the lovebirds some private space. I guess you'll have to find me another girl. Don't act like we're close. I don't want a flippant and heartless friend like you. You're the heartless one. You're making a mess with your ridiculous standards and expect others to follow all of that. Then act like a victim? Don't you see how Patrick is the real casualty here? He tended to your absurd needs. Even helped you get a boyfriend, yet all you do is treat him like garbage. Selfish Paige. You're not as perfect as you think. What? What do you know? You're just a plastic girl after all. Yeah, I might be plastic, but at least I realize what my flaws are to try to fix them. Unlike you, you call yourself a diamond when actually you're just a silly pebble. Was this really what people thought of me? I couldn't believe anyone would ever describe me with such ugly words. <laughs> I ran home and shut myself away in my room. It made me so distraught knowing that other people thought I was bad like that. Mom came into my room to check on me, and I ended up blurting everything to her. How everyone seemed to hate me now. How I might be alone for the rest of my life without finding my perfect other half and having a happy ending like mom and dad. Sweetie, everyone has flaws. I do, and so does your father. I can have quite the temper, but your dad always knows what to say and do to calm me down. While he is terrible at being romantic, so I have to give him hints now and then. Point is, we accept and love each other, flaws and all. That's the secret to a long and happy marriage. Talking to mom really helped me understand that no one is perfect, and therefore my standards are unreasonable. I had some apologizing to do. I texted Beavis, Daniel, Eric, and Nina. Beavis replied straight away, telling me he was sorry too for what he said, but it came from a good place, and he's sure that I was better than that because he trusts Patrick's eye for people. Now there was just one last apology for me to make, and I needed to do this one in person. Oh, looks like he already found me. Hey, shoddy. Are you looking for me? The most handsome guy in town. Please stop. I came to talk to you about something serious. Uh, I came to see you too. Trust me, I didn't match you with those silly guys on purpose. In no way do I want to hurt you. Because, because I like you, Paige. For real. Since when? I, I just thought we were just good friends. Since we started dating. At first, I just went along with it. But gradually, I found myself having real feelings for you. I'm so sorry for causing you trouble. Being around you makes my head fuzzy. I always crack jokes just because I want to make you smile, but turns out you don't feel the same. I will try to keep it down from now on. No, I'm sorry too. You don't have to change anything for me. It's the real you after all. I've truly learned it now. Nobody's perfect, and it's the way people complete each other's imperfections with their personality differences that tighten the relationships. And maybe being perfect is my imperfection. So now you have my permission to offset it with your annoying unseriousness. So where were we as a couple? Ha, <laughs> oh right, Paige's vomit. Shall we go home and make that signature drink again? <laughs> Just kidding. I was at the fish market busy selling some crabs to a customer when I turned around and saw this guy stealing our fish. He quickly ran away. I grabbed a stone, aiming it at the thief, but suddenly a guy appeared and it hit him instead. Hey, what was that? Let go of me! Shouldn't you at least apologize? I looked over and the thief was nowhere to be found. The thief's escaped! You should apologize! But the guy just frowned and huffed off. 
Hi, I'm Serena, and I was brought up here, in this picturesque fishing town. When I was little, I lost mom and dad to the sea, so grandma raised me. We couldn't afford school for me. Instead, I helped grandma sell fish at the market to make ends meet. But things weren't always easy. Serena, you all right? Yes, I just wish people wouldn't steal. I know. Hopefully it was an extra stinky fish that will give them a tummy ache. That's Edward, my best friend since childhood. Edward's parents are also fishermen, so we naturally bond together and grew up inseparable. Later, Edward and I were busy closing when I heard murmurs and saw Mr. Elbridge, the fishing enforcement officer. Anyone caught poaching striped bass will be given a hefty fine. What? He gotta be kidding me! Sir, it's only considered poaching if they were caught out of season, which they're not! Oh, really? Do you have the legal documentation to overpower my decision? Nope. Thought as much. He's obviously abusing his power. At home, I told Grandma everything that had happened at the fish market. I know it's not fair, sweetie, but maybe one day you could study, become an amazing lawyer, and help the local fishermen. I want to help. I can tutor you if you'd like. That's brilliant. Since then, Edward stayed true to his word and tutored me. He was smart, kind, and so patient in explaining things to me. Time flies, and by the time I turned 13, I had the biggest crush on Edward, but I had no clue how he felt about me. I'll wash up. In the future, I'll always share the housework with you. What does he mean by that? Does he also have feelings for me? The next day, when Edward and I were having ice cream, some kids came in and started making fun of me. Do you know eating too much ice cream makes you fat? Oh, of course you don't, because you don't go to school. (laughs) She doesn't need to. She's still far smarter than you'll ever be. Why did you always stick up for me? Is it because you think of me as a... as a... As a little sister? I need to stop daydreaming. He doesn't have those kinds of feelings for me. Then, when I turned 17, something terrible happened. Grandma felt so sick that she passed away. At the funeral, I felt so alone with all the adults around, and Edward was nowhere to be seen. When everything was settled, Uncle Leon said he'd take me to live with his family in the city. I had to tell Edward, but when I got to his house, it was all locked up. So I quickly slid a note with my uncle's address under his door, then left for the city. As soon as we walked into the mansion, and Clara and Rachel were already there, frowning. Ugh, can you smell rotting fish? Ew, uh, get yourself some perfume, please. Enough, you will make Serena feel welcome here. Please prepare a nice room and everything Serena needs. Uh Uh-oh, not a good start. But then Uncle Leon had to go away for a business trip and asked Aunt Clara to find me a tutor as he was afraid going to school might be a shock for me. I was so excited to finally study and pursue my lawyer dream. However... All the tutors Aunt Clara found were terrible. I actually had to teach them simple sums. Meanwhile, Aunt Clara showered me with errands to run. Suddenly, I saw a blur of a dog and boy and... Smash! You idiot! How am I meant to cycle home with an injured knee? You're hearing this, Rex? How is she gonna cycle back home? Sorry, I'll take you home. I accepted his offer, mainly because I didn't exactly have much choice. What's your number? Well, that was quick. Stop daydreaming. I need it in case I decide to sue you. The guy, Henry, finally quit fooling around and gave me his number. When we got to the mansion, I caught sight of a familiar figure. Edward! I limped over and looped my arms around him. Who are you? Before I could respond, Henry shrugged his shoulders, then left. Edward then told me all about the tragic events that had happened to him. My father made a bad decision to go dynamite fishing. The Coast Guard caught him, but as he tried to run away, his boat smashed into a reef. We needed to move to the city for his treatment. Luckily, I got a scholarship into college here, so I can study and also care for Dad. I'm so sorry it's taken me this long to find you. That's okay, I understand. It all sounds terrible. What about you? So you live in that big mansion now? Is that guy your boyfriend? Henry? Oh, no, no. He's just good because, well, I wanted to tell you that I missed you and I love you, Serena. But but you said I'm just a sister to you. I was 13. I didn't understand my feelings back then, but I do now. Serena, not having you by my side felt so empty. Will you be my girlfriend? We started dating and having Edward by my side felt so great. I was complaining about my terrible tutors when Edward suggested he become my tutor instead. That's a great idea. You'll need to prepare an atrocious CV for my aunt to hire you. And it worked. I don't expect you to get very far with this one. She is rather dumb. What's the deal with you two? She doesn't like having me here. Halfway through the lesson, Edward got a call from the hospital asking him to pay his dad's bills ASAP before his condition worsened. I was comforting him when Rachel barged in. Serena, go get me some ice.
Oh, hello there. Get out! Who's that? Rachel, my cousin. Edward seemed distracted after that. I guess he was upset about his dad. He told me to continue with my worksheet and went to the bathroom. I finished the work, but Edward still hadn't returned. Was he lost in this massive house or something? I went to look for him and was shocked to see him and Rachel happily laughing together. Hi, Serena. I was just getting some water. I ignored Edward and continued studying by myself. Are you jealous? I was just being polite. Darn it, he knew I couldn't be mad at him when he smiled at me like that. But as we continued studying, I couldn't fully shake away my uneasy feeling. But the next day, I was waiting to study with Edward when Edward won't be coming today. What? I asked her why, but she just walked off. As she left, I heard her ask the maid to bring fruits to Rachel and her new tutor. Huh? Since when did Rachel have a tutor? Sensing something was up, I sneaked over to Rachel's room and spotted, Edward? Serena, what are you doing over here? Oh, is stalking your new hobby now? I looked at Edward, but he just sat still, so I ran off with blurry eyes and an aching heart. Edward tried to call me, but I just ignored it. That night, he texted me and insisted on waiting for me. I wanted to hear him out, but I was still so angry at him. Serena, please. Your aunt told me I couldn't tutor you anymore and asked me to be Rachel's tutor instead. I need the money for my dad's treatment. I can't turn this amount of money down. Ugh, my aunt was such a witch. I'm so sorry. I would much rather be tutoring you. You're the only girl for me, but I can't lose this job. So let's keep our relationship a secret, okay? This was no big deal, right? It was me he wanted, not Rachel. Edward's birthday soon arrived, and we have a date at this restaurant today. I was excited when my phone buzzed. Sorry, babe, something's come up. Can't make it, X. It must have been something super important for him to cancel like that. But on my way home, I passed another restaurant and couldn't believe my eyes. Edward and Rachel were sitting together. Rage swarmed over me, and before I could stop myself, I charged in there. Edward, how could you? Jeez, what's up with you? He's not even your tutor anymore. Ask him how long he's known me for. Uh, I was just your tutor, that's all. I couldn't believe this, so I stormed off. I felt like such a fool for ever believing his lies. While running in tears, I bumped straight into Henry. You look like you just got dumped. <laughs> it was the straw that broke the camel's back, so I started crying louder. It's not me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Please stop crying. Anything you want. Anything. How about the aquarium? It turns out the aquarium was just what I needed. Watching the fish was so relaxing, and Henry was surprisingly a lot of fun to be around. Your parents must be super easygoing to put up with you. Nope. My lawyer mom is way opposite. Oh, wow. That's cool. It's my dream to be a lawyer. Is that so? My school's interviewing for a law foundation course. You should apply. A law foundation course, huh? Should I give it a try? I arrived home feeling better, but Aunt Clara wouldn't leave me alone with her usual mocking routines. You spoiled ingrate. Soon you'll be 18 and I can rid my hands of you. I had enough. So I decided to apply for the foundation program Henry mentioned. It was time to focus on my dream without any further distractions. I studied hard and went to the library for materials. Henry offered to help, and even though I still found him childish sometimes, he was actually quite smart and knew loads about the law. One time, Henry invited me to come watch his debate team. Only when I showed up and spoke to Henry, I saw Edward walk in. My dad's ill, yet here you are with him? Serena can go where she pleases. It's okay, Henry. I got it. Rachel's just my friend. I love you, not her. I just need to earn enough money. Then I'll end this mess with Rachel for good. What he did was still hard to accept, but he was not a tough situation. I would be a terrible girlfriend if I didn't support him, right? Despite all this drama, I'd been studying hard, and now it was time for my interview. Only, on my way there, I saw a woman yelling at two students. Watch where you're going, you idiots! Excuse me, but this is a pedestrian crossing, hence the driver's fault for not stopping. How dare you speak the law to me, you little girl! Do you know who I am? But as everyone started buzzing, she had no choice but to drive off. <sighs> what happened? I explained it to him and pointed at the woman's car. He didn't say anything, but seemed quite surprised. We then went to the interview, but when I told the assistant my name, she smiled and said, You don't need to draw a number. Mrs. Shodden was impressed with your profile, so she wishes to interview you herself. It's best you follow the right procedure. I was a bit confused, but Henry knew better than me. Anyway, I had my interview with someone else, and I passed. Yay! Since then, I studied hard, and Henry helped me a lot. On my first oral exam, he even came along to encourage me. Only, as soon as I stepped into the room, I saw that rude woman standing there. Hang on, she's the judge! 
nerves wriggled at me, but I kept calm and nailed the exam. But afterward, she charged over to me. Don't expect a pass from me, you manipulative girl, seducing my son to get into this college. Huh? Her son? Who? Mom, you can't do that. The exam's recorded. They'll see you're just being prejudiced. I insist you cut ties with a schemer at once. She humiliated me in front of a crowd and tried to smudge my impeccable reputation. No, she didn't. She was just telling the truth. Oh, and that day, I purposely called her in for an interview, but turned out you intervened. And ever since then, the snake was following you everywhere. So end it at once or leave. So this woman is Miss Shodden? And worse still, she's Henry's mom? Suddenly, Henry grabbed my hand and led me out of there. How dare you! You're ungrateful and spoiled! I only adopted you so I had someone to look after me in my old age. But you know what? You'll never be my son! Don't forget to take your meds twice a day. Seeing him talk back to his mother just to defend me, I couldn't help but ask, Henry, why did you help me so much? It's because mom was in the wrong, and seeing you getting pushed around hurts me a lot. Why, Henry? Because I like you a lot. Let me be there for you. Um, Henry, your mom shouldn't have spoken to you like that, but she was only angry because she cares about you. You should talk to her. I really hope things will turn out fine between them. Henry dropped me home, and now all I could think about was his love confession. To be honest, I do have feelings for Henry, but what about Edward? What about our years spent together? Suddenly, I got a text from Edward, asking to meet up. I guess it was time to sort this out. While waiting for Edward to order ice cream, I got a message from Henry, saying he was coming to my place for some great news. I asked him to come pick me up instead. This reminds me of our fishing village in summer and getting ice creams at the end of a sweltering day. I love you, Serena. I always cherish our memories together every day. Edward, actually, this isn't working. I think we should stop seeing each other. W what Why? I soon realized that something was wrong with our relationship. I just didn't have the courage to face it. We had a special friendship that I cherished and nurtured, but now I think it's time for me to accept the truth that we're not meant for each other. Bye, Edward. I wish you the best with Rachel. As I stepped out of there, I saw Henry waiting for me, and I instantly felt better. I made up with my mom. She apologized for what she said in her temper, and told me that I would always be her real son. Henry, that's brilliant news! Right then, I got a message from Miss Shodden. Serena, I apologized for my behavior. I am most pleased Henry is getting to know such a righteous lawyer in the making. It looks like everything's falling into place. I arrived home, not expecting to see Rachel in a fit of tears. Mom, make her leave! This is all her fault! How dare you bewitch Edward! He's quit tutoring Rachel and now my poor Rachel is distraught! I will keep on hiring you awful tutors and see how long it takes until you break. Ahem, <clears throat> is that so? So Uncle Leon stopped Rachel's allowance and took Aunt Clara's credit cards off her. He also made them apologize to me. I told him about my foundation placement and he was so happy for me and offered to rent me an apartment near the college. It's time to live my dream. Now I just had one thing left to do, take Henry to visit my hometown with me. This place looks familiar to me. <gasps> I know, I think I came here as a child. Yes, this weird little girl threw a stone at me and then got mad. I suddenly realized Henry was that tourist guy I met when I was 10. Yep, that would be me. Henry seemed surprised, then suddenly pulled me in. I guess some things are just meant to be. Hey there, animated story show viewers. I'm Crystal, a model and influencer, and I'm here for the Trend Like This Influencer Awards. Why don't you come on in and get ready with me? I know what you're thinking. I have a unique look. You see, I have vitiligo, a condition that causes pale patches to develop on my skin. It's definitely different, but I don't really see it as a disadvantage, but rather one of my biggest perks in life. Since I was a kid, people have always gawped at me in the street. But luckily, my mom and big sis have always been there to support me. Honey, they're only looking at you that way because you're beautifully different. Yeah, Crystal, never doubt yourself. You're one of a kind. Thanks to them, I've grown to adore the way I look. Then one time, while we were walking in the park, this eccentric-looking man approached me. Oh my word, your skin! It's a masterpiece! Turns out, he was Beau Ivanov, the world-renowned photographer. He begged me to model for him, and with the encouragement of my mom and sis, I agreed, and my photos became a viral hit. That's when my interest in modeling sparked. I joined this awesome modeling agent and got to learn all poses for photo shoots, wear these gorgeous outfits, and best of all, have makeup done to complement my vitiligo, not to hide it. Ever since then, I've worked my butt off, fully committed to my work. 
That's how I became the face of multiple fashion brands and built up my influence empire. I wanted to pave the way for people like me to love themselves and celebrate our own uniqueness. Because look at me. My career, my life could come to this point today, all thanks to my skin. And I wouldn't change it for the world. But then this morning came. I woke up to see... Yeah! My vitiligo patches, they were gone! This can't be happening! I still have tons of fashion shows and events booked for the rest of the year. Without my patches, will they all cancel on me? Panicked, I called my manager, Alex, and she immediately rushed into my apartment. This shouldn't have happened. The project with Red Rush is next week. I know that. What can I do? Go see a dermatologist? No, Crystal. You can't breathe a word about this to anyone. You don't want to ruin your career, do you? Well, no, but I can't hide inside forever. No, you can't. But you can fake your patches. Just use makeup. Draw some on. What? You mean I should lie to everyone? Your choice. It's either that or kiss goodbye to your career. This is wrong, I know, but I've worked so hard for this. I couldn't just give up now. I guess the foundation would have to make do. I went back to my daily modeling life, and luckily no one seemed to suspect anything. But I was so on edge and constantly checking my makeup. Crystal, have you heard? The brand Raris is looking for models with unconventional features for its newest fashion collection. You're the perfect fit! OMG! Everyone who's anyone in fashion knew of the Raris' creator, Mr. Finnegan. If I become his muse, that's my step into high fashion world! I can't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity! I got my focus straight, fearlessly walking into the building, when suddenly my heel got stuck. I tumbled backward, and out of nowhere, these strong arms wrapped around me, and I landed straight into their warm embrace. For a moment there, I could feel their divine scent overpowering me. Hmm, you're sauvage, isn't it? You don't change much, do you? Still clumsy, even though you're now a superstar. Hold up. This voice, it's Sam, my high school ride or die. My, my, puberty has hit him hard, huh? Samuel knelt down and gently put the heel back on my foot. Yep, my heart was definitely flipping out of my chest. You're going in for the casting, right? Oh, um, yes, but how do you know? I'm one of the judges. I gotta go now. Break a leg, uh, but not literally. Wow, Samuel's made a name for himself already. Impressive. Wait, Crystal, you're here for work. And now time to shine. I strutted my way along the catwalk, doing my signature twist-turn pose at the end of it. As expected, all the judges were mesmerized. This job was in the bag. Just then, everyone went ooh and aw at the girl next in line. It's Amanda! She's known as the super rookie, who challenges the modeling world's standards. Ironically, that title once belonged to me, but that's how this industry works. You can easily be dismissed if not careful. We got the results right after the casting. As expected, I was in for the show. Hooray! Hey, Crystal, right? Amanda, huge fan of yours. Say, can a pro like you give this rookie any advice while we train together? You do know this is a competition, right? That means no help. Then I shimmied off. Day one of the training and I already messed up. I had to disguise myself to sneak out and buy a new one. Crisis averted, but this did make me 30 minutes late. You're the professional. Act like one so us amateur can look up to. A veteran in modeling. Or so they say. Those chicks wouldn't miss the chance to dethrone me. Especially her. Welcome, everyone. May I introduce you to our fall 2023 haute couture collection. It is inspired by the elegant art of ballet. So besides your usual training, you'll have a chance to learn some of the moves to capture its true essence. Then I'll pick my star, my vedette. Ballet? I hadn't done that since the accident. Little six-year-old me was having a ballet performance and had to do this crazy spinning technique. But somehow, I ended up twirling like a humming top, then face-planted right on the stage. I never forget the audience's mocking waves of laughter. No, get yourself together, Crystal. Whatever the challenge is, I'll succeed and rock the vedette position. The first lesson was catwalk. Easy peasy, no one came close to matching me. Good posture, excellent posing. Well done, Crystal. Aw, oh, he's so sweet. Can we just take a break to admire this piece of art? Come on, why are you so shy today, Crystal? Your patches are superb. <laughs> Except they're just the magic of makeup. But the nightmare had only just begun. Jeez, these clothes were way too tight. They got me melting like the witch from The Wizard of Oz. Gotta go touch up. Then during another session, I couldn't keep my balance and was wobblier than a jellyfish. Meanwhile, Amanda effortlessly executed all those moves. 
A few days later, Mr. Finnegan organized a photo shoot, which we had to pose like a ballerina on this revolving platform. The past trauma immediately rushed back into my head. I stepped onto the platform shaking like a leaf. Only with Samuel holding my hands could I imagine to do the simplest pose. At least it's over now. My, my, our pro seems a little rusty, doesn't she? Just step back and let one of us younger girls take care of this. Right, Amanda? Go practice, Xena. Amanda stepped up to the platform. Her body started moving like a real swan. Gorgeous, Amanda. You're as graceful as the ballerina in the musical box. That's it. I think we got the shot. Well done. The whole set erupted in applause, and Amanda was the center of attention. Looks like you could learn a thing or two from your junior. Look, I may not be the best ballerina out there, but I'll show them where 1,000% efforts get me in life. So I stayed later after the training to practice more, starting with stretching. Ouch, not as easy as it looked. Okay, let's try again. Just have to raise my leg and... Whoa, whoa! Okay, this time it has to work. And now the hardest part, sur le point. Uh-oh. Just then, Samuel appeared, trying to catch me, but we both ended up stumbling on the floor. Don't try too hard. You may hurt yourself. It's just, the vedette means a lot to me. I know you can do it. You've been such a positive influence, and I know that energy can get you what you want. No, my patches. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's okay. I crossed the line. I'll just leave now. Don't, please. If you only knew the truth, you wouldn't think so highly of me. Hey, what's wrong? You can talk to me, you know. Just then, the lights brightened around us. What are you two doing here at this hour? Samuel looked startled and immediately kept his distance from me. Nothing. I saw Crystal practicing. Thought I could give her some advice. That's not fair. I need some too. What do you think of my releve? They started laughing together like a married couple. Since when did they get so close? After a few days of intense practice, I may not be a ballet master yet, but I did feel more confident about facing the final challenge, which decided who would be the vedette. Look at this gorgeous couture design. I would make a perfect black swan. I tried the dress on, but accidentally smudged the foundation and got it all over the dress. Oh no! I immediately rushed to the bathroom trying to wash the stain off. Stupid foundation. Super stain my butt. The door suddenly snapped open and in stepped, Amanda. You, your vitiligo patches? They're coming off? And what are you doing with the dress? I tried to hide it, but she already snatched it away from me. Is it foundation stain? Did you fake your vitiligo? No, no, I was diagnosed with vitiligo for real, I, I swear. I told her the truth, thought she was going to use it against me, but to my surprise, she looked heartbroken. I decided to pursue modeling because I felt inspired by you, but now you're telling me it's all a scam? How could you? Amanda, wait, please. I... I thought you were against me. Does it matter anymore? Now that I got a taste of the truth, you don't deserve my respect. I was at an utter loss for words. I'd been so wrapped up in fear of losing my career that I couldn't care less how my action could affect those who looked up to me. I'm nothing more than a hypocrite. I couldn't live like this anymore. Vitiligo or not, I had to stay true to who I am. I walked straight up to the judges' panel and wiped all my foundation away right in front of them. Mr. Finnegan, I no longer fit in your collection. The truth is, my vitiligo has gone. I no longer have any unconventional features. Thus, I'm here to announce that I will cut myself from the show. I'm deeply sorry for all the trouble I caused. I turned to walk out the door, but there stood Samuel. Crystal, I don't understand. I'm sorry, Sam. I'm not the person you think I am. I ran home, hid under the blanket, and cried myself to sleep. Suddenly, a call from my manager woke me up. How can you sleep at this hour? The press is going wild. They're calling you an attention-seeking fraud. I immediately came to my senses and looked up the news. Oh no, how could it break out so fast? At this speed, I'd be canceled by tomorrow morning. See what happens when you act out of my order? Gosh, you models are so dumb. Don't go anywhere. I'll be there to handle this. Was she being for real? All of this was her idea in the first place. Enough! Have fun dealing with this on your own, Alex. I shut down my phone, packed my stuff, and left it all behind to go to my secret place. I used to spend time here with my family when I was a kid. Being surrounded by nature calms me down. Suddenly a hand pressed on my shoulder. Hey, we've been looking for you. Samuel? And Amanda? Did you guys follow me here? It's the only way we could find you. I'm sorry for going at you like that. I was so shocked. You don't have to. It's all my fault. I lost myself when my vitiligo went away. I acted out of fear and ended up disappointing everyone who's counting on me. <sighs> well, it's hard to stay sane when your identity is taken from you. But what's important is you've learned your lesson. 
Now, where is the fearless, confident crystal we all love? She's right. Patches or not, you're always special to us. That means a lot to me. Thanks, you guys. Turns out I'd misunderstood Amanda this whole time. She's brilliant, gorgeous, and caring. And perfect for Samuel. Welp, that stings. Suppose it's time I got back to work for some damage control. I opened the phone to see hundreds of notifications. Among them was a message from Mr. Finnegan, saying he has a place for me at the fashion show. So it's not the end for me, right? Go get it, girl. Yes, it felt so good to be back. Crystal, you're here. I have great news. You'll be the vedette for this collection. Me? But I don't have any unconventional features. Doesn't matter. You're perfect the way you are. Two girls will stand by your side, and you'll be in the center wearing this work of art. An elegant swan among the flock of ugly ducks. Isn't that a bit offensive? So this was your plan all along? Playing dirty tricks to save your flopped career? Cut it, Xena. Mocking me won't change the situation. There's something fishy going on here, and I'm gonna get to the end of it. Finally, the show has come. As soon as I got the signal, I strutted to the runway confidently, turning heads to my every step. But it's not for the reason you're thinking. I actually switched places with Amanda, and now all the spotlights are on her. Right at that moment, Mr. Finnegan bolted to the runway. What do you think you're doing? You ruined my show. I had a deal with her. I... What deal? Tell me. Right now. I... It's her who's behind this. Alex? Ugh, that snake! It turned out Alex bribed Mr. Finnegan to let me be the vedette and dragged the models with unconventional features down since I'm no longer one of them. Hearing that, all the models turned furious, ready to jump at the two frauds. You two have crossed the line. I don't need any of your manipulative games to continue my career. I will stay true to myself no matter what. Unconventional features or not, I'm always willing to speak up for them because everyone is beautiful in their own way and they deserve a chance to showcase their beauty to the world. The audience erupted in cheers and applause while Mr. Finnegan and Alex were surrounded by cameras and criticism. Justice served. After all that drama, I'm still modeling, but with a different agency that fully accepts me for the real me. I continued to influence young people on self-love and being uniquely themselves. Amanda and I became the best of friends. We also made tons of plans to collaborate with Samuel, but honestly, I couldn't shake off this heart-wrenching feeling whenever these two were together. Luckily, my hectic schedule has left me no time to think about that. Guess what? After days and nights of hard work, I now have my own line of skincare products called Only You. Exciting, right? Oh, Sam, you made it. Wow, they're beautiful. Amanda will love them. Uh, no, they're not for Amanda. They're for you. Crystal, I... I'm crazy about you. I always have been. What? It's me you like all along? Then why didn't you tell me that before, silly? I leaped into his arms, and we shared the most amazing kiss. Perfect ending for an amazing journey, huh? I dashed along the hallway, then skidded to a halt in front of the classroom door. Ah, uh, I was late. Again. Miss Anderson, what's your excuse today? Morning, sir. I'm sorry, but my spaniel hid my shoes, then I tripped over a package by my front door, then my heap of a junk car wouldn't start, and... That's enough. Good God. Please sit down. Ashley already took attendance. What? So much for my perfectly crafted excuse. Mr. O'Shaughnessy totally would have let it slide, but she had to ruin it. I'm Ashley. I'm pretty. I'm perfect. Everybody likes me. Well, no one likes teacher's pets, Ashley. Think I'm being too harsh on her? <laughs> Just ask anyone about Ashley Mae Anderson. Ashley's father's a vet with a Medal of Valor. They even had dinner with the president at the White House. For her sweet 16, she rented out the swankiest club downtown for an entire weekend. And David Guetta DJed. Ashley dated two college boys at the same time, and when they found out, things got physical. Okay, okay, maybe not all of that was true, but who cares? Look, the main character here is me. Hi, my name's Ashley Mae Anderson. I know, what a freaky coincidence, right? But that's the only thing we had in common. Because unlike popular Ashley, I'm just a normal teen who's just minding her own business. But then she transferred here and messed up everything. This happens every time I open my locker. And they're not addressed to me, but to Ashley. Jeez, why do boys go so cuckoo bananas over that pretentious princess? I gathered that whole cluster and dumped them on Ashley's desk. Here's your delivery for the day. Oh, I have no use for those things. You can keep them if you want. Ha, 
How snobby. I know those rumors weren't all lies. Alright, if you said so. Being mistaken for Ashley was so annoying that I did consider putting a sign on my locker or something. But I suppose sometimes it actually had its perks. Like when I accidentally knocked over a trash can in the school's parking lot. But upon knowing my name, the janitor said my father was his commanding officer back in the day and let me off. And believe it or not, these mix-ups didn't only happen at school. Once, my family went out for dinner and the staff at this restaurant thought we were the other Andersons. They must be some really important people because the super attentive waiters topped up our drinks for free and gave us complimentary desserts. Pretty sweet, right? Only when we were leaving, things almost went south when the manager shook my dad's hand and said, Thank you for your service. My dad seemed confused, but fortunately, I dragged him away before they busted us. I mean, Ashley's been enjoying these privileges her entire life, so it's fair I benefit a little from them. Especially since I have to endure being called her Walmart version. Anyway, back to me. I arrived home to find a teary-eyed girl sitting on our front porch. She must be one of Billy's exes. If your brother's a jock that all girls flock around, you'd get used to this real soon. He went through girlfriends quicker than hair gel, and he always had some peeves about them, like Mandy, too clingy, Katie, too dramatic, Maggie, too flirty. The list goes on. Then, as soon as my backpack hit the bedroom floor, my door burst open. Hey, I need your help. What? Need a hand to make up with cry Barbie out there? She's ancient history. Check this out. Her name's Jane Brown. Ain't she a beaut? I immediately recognized her. She's the waitress that he kept eyeing the other day. Now, he needed my help to ask her out and not seem creepy. So, I suggested taking her to his friend Alexander's party this weekend. How do you know about that? Isn't that cool people exclusive? As if I wanted to. I was added to their group chat by accident because they thought I was Ashley. <laughs> right. Hot Ashley. You should come too. I'll be with Jane, but Victor will be there. Wait, I'll see my crush at that stupid party? Sign me up then. Jocks, cheerleaders, stuck-up kids. This place was packed with people like Billy. My brother briefly introduced me to the host Alexander, while Madison followed him around looking all shy and gooey-eyed. Wasn't she bothered that all Alexander seemed to care about was if anyone had seen Ashley? I also got to officially meet Jane, but the person I was looking for was Victor. He's so much more than just a cute face in the crowd. He's the peanut butter to my jelly. But before I could talk to him, a bunch of dudes popped out of nowhere. This is Ashley? Oh man, I thought she was supposed to be pretty. No offense though. She's a six if you squint hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm squinting now and you're barely even a two yourself. No offense though. What, what did, did you, you say? say? <laughs> Don't worry, you can still go after pretty girls. They just need a crate of fear first. The crowd suddenly felt silent and stared at us. This party is so lame. Peace out, losers. Anywhere is better than that stuffy elitist hellhole, but it's a bummer I didn't get to talk to Victor. He's Billy's best bro and used to come hang out at our place pretty much every day, but not anymore. Guess has been avoiding me ever since I told him I had feelings for him. <sighs> I was going to settle things with him tonight, but those jerks ruined it. Do I need to print my own t-shirt saying, I'm Ashley, you must be looking for Ashley? The next day, while looking for Victor, I heard someone calling my name. But I turned around only to see Alexander calling for, ugh, Ashley. So annoying. I saw him make a move on her, but she said guys like him bored her, then proceeded to list all his flaws. Oof, harsh. From then on, I tried my best to avoid Ashley, and thought my life would be light and breezy. But nope. On the contrary, I found myself in a series of unfortunate events. One day, a stack of religious magazines randomly showed up on our doorstep. But the real kicker was, they were all addressed specifically to me. And there was absolutely no way to convince my family and neighbors that I wasn't a member of the Church of Scientology. Two days later, all of my clean clothes had some weird stains and holes on them. I had to beg Billy to lend me some of his. That day, I went to school in an old jersey, looking like a midget. <sighs> then, this Monday, I became the center of attention by showing up with my face covered in pimple patches and band-aids. 
Well, that's because I woke up to countless cystic acne and didn't have enough patches. This resulted in me being called the mummy for five days straight. But the final straw was my car having two flat tires. The clock was ticking, so I asked Billy to take me to school. However, he just flat out refused, saying he'd already promised to pick Jane up. No other choice. I had to ride my old bike. When I saw Billy's car in the driveway, my pettiness got the better of me, so I splashed my half-empty milk carton over the windshield. I'm on my way. Oh my god, you little brat! Sorry, babe, you won't believe what my sister just did. Seeing Billy's reaction was chef's kiss. <laughs> you got it coming, big bro. The next day, my car was fixed, so I managed to get to school early. Looks like my string of bad luck was finally over. Okay, let's see who wants to confess to Queen Ashley today. From... Victor? Oh no, why him? I stood there, frozen with a letter in my hand, still processing the situation when a friend came and showed me something on her phone. It's a video of me singing and dancing in my room. No one's supposed to see this, ever. It had been uploaded by some throwaway account, but who else could it be but... Jesus Christ, Billy! I rushed home to see Billy and Jane cuddling in the living room. How's he still so calm after pulling that on me? I confronted him, and he didn't even bother denying it, and even said that's what I deserved for vandalizing his car. We screamed and shouted at each other, but before we ended up in a fistfight, he stopped and stumped off to his room. I was still fuming, glaring at his shadow, when I saw Jane gawping at me in delight. Don't blame your poor brother too much, dear. It was I who pulled the strings. What? Jane? But why? We'd barely even interacted. Then she went on about all of my mishaps lately were her doings. Yep, my so-called bad luck, it had been Jane all along. That's for stealing Alexander from my sister. He's her first love. Do you know how heartbroken Zoe has been? Wait, Zoe who? And why on earth would I choose to mingle with that playboy Alex? Kudos to this girl for thinking I could ever steal someone's boyfriend. Hello, I'm still struggling with my lifelong crush over here. I tried to tell her she made a mistake, but she wouldn't listen. Stop denying it. I know it's you. You're East High's Ashley with a vet dad. That checked all the boxes already. Hold up. There's another Ashley Mae Anderson in our school. She's Ashley with E-Y. I'm Ashley, E-I-G-H. Her dad is a war veteran. My father is a veterinarian. Oh, snap. Good lord. She devised this intricate plan, approached Billy just to make it work, and was successful for the most part. Well, apart from having the wrong person. Just amazing. Jane apologized and promised to take down the video. However, she wanted me to help her take revenge on Ashley in return. I didn't want to get involved, but I also never wanted to be on her bad side again, so I reluctantly agreed. But if you think about it, Jane's story didn't quite add up. Ashley seemed to have a holier-than-thou attitude and had dozens of admirers waiting in line. Why would she get in between them? Not to mention, Alexander's a notorious player who Ashley already ruthlessly rejected. I believe there's more to this. As expected, thanks to that video, my school life was now even more awkward than usual. But it didn't matter, as I was too preoccupied with Operation Ashley. Today's mission? Approach her after cheerleading practice. I stood in the corner, behind the bleacher, waiting for my chance. But before I showed myself, I saw Madison march over, say something to Ashley, then storm off. After that, Ashley started… sobbing? I didn't know what happened, but I felt bad for her. So I tried comforting her, but she kept brushing me off. Look, you can keep the Ice Queen act all you want, but I know you have feelings too. I thought you might have something else you want to share with me, not just the name. And it was like I pulled a lever that let out all of her bottled up emotions, and we had a heart to heart all afternoon. Just as I thought, things weren't what they seemed. We'd better talk this through with one another, so I set up a meeting at a cafe in the South Coast Plaza, as they wouldn't dare to cause a scene in public, right? Anyway, Ashley clarified that Alexander and her weren't a thing, while assuring Zoe that she deserved a guy much better than him. But Alex was really sweet to me. He gave me this present on our one-month anniversary. 
Did he say it's his grandmother's? Yeah, he tried giving me an identical one on my birthday. I'd say you dodged a bullet when you two broke up. Please, look at yourself first. You two flirt with boys left and right and still act all high and mighty. Get off that high horse. Ashley seemed genuinely hurt by Jane's words that it took her a while to speak up. I'm just sick and tired of being the popular girl who has to live up to everyone's expectations. It's too exhausting. I thought transferring here would mean a fresh start, but everyone still has this impression of me which I can't seem to change. The rest of us looked at each other in confusion when we saw how sad Ashley's situation actually was. We didn't know there were so many downsides to being high school popular. Ashley, you know you can just be yourself, right? The world will have to accept you for who you truly are. If people don't like you, then so be it. Yeah, if they don't, that's their problem, not yours. You can't fit into a mold to please everyone, because there's no such thing. I don't want to agree with her, but she has a point. Let the whole world know the real Ashley, and you too, Zoe. Someday, you'll find a good guy who loves you for yourself. Alright girls, that's settled. Now, I have to deal with my own mess. Billy found out the truth and now he's been ghosting me. But I swear to God, I'm in love with this guy. Gotta go. Bye! I couldn't believe I was rooting for my saboteur and her accomplice to be together. But here I was. Go get him, tiger! The next Monday, Ashley walked to class and had lunch with me instead of Madison and her clique. And, of course, this didn't go unnoticed. You left us for her? What is she? You're not hot, sister? <laughs> Before I could clap back, Ashley stood up and unleashed her inner sass. This is me living my life as my true self. If any of you bootlickers have something to say about that, you can shove it where the sun won't shine. Sweet Mary Jesus and Holy Spirits! Who knew she had it in her? Her words completely decimated those hyenas. And suddenly, someone grabbed my wrist. Victor? Slow down! Where are you taking me? Besides, you got the wrong person, and also the wrong address for this. You should give it to her yourself. Actually, I sent it to the right girl, but apparently, she still hasn't opened it. Wait... What? And you're right, I should tell her myself. It's just that Billy and I made a deal that sisters are off limits, so I thought it's better to avoid you. But hearing Ashley talk about being herself made me realize that I'm sick of hiding my feelings. I'm gonna make Billy see how sincere I am for you. Before I do that, Ashley, I like you. And, um, will you go on a date with me? Yes! Um, I mean, yeah, I suppose that would be cool. This is beyond my wildest dream! Not only do I have a brand new friend, but also a date with my dream guy! Fortune is finally smiling on me. 